Hey, good people out there. Hope you're all well. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Uh, I've got loads of people on here commenting. And uh, I've got uh, my old mate, JK. Where is he? There he is. No, it's not. It's JK. Where are you, JK? <laughs> I just seen him. I don't know where he is. I've got a clue. I think he's disappeared on me. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Today. I've got uh, the Montenegro here. Got the Montenegro all the way from Montenegro, Chris. Overlap from last meeting. Thank Carl I from Chris Bestwell. Blah, 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 blah. And there he is. And uh, there's three of us. Clem. Oh, hang on. No, no. I thought he was going to say that there was uh, three. I, I, I can't read this thing sometimes. You know, it, it's a bit odd. But anyway, there's JK here. There he is. JK. Evening, Frank. How you doing? Yeah, I'm all right. How are you? I'm great, bro. I'm great. Well, yeah. there's the, 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 this Chris lad, you know, from Montenegro. He, he's given a team here. And he says his best 11 for the, from the Monty Reds is 3-4-3. Um, three, three. Clements Carre, Carriga. Hanson, Emlyn, Emlyn News, that is, Sunes, Stevie, Terry Mack, Barnes, Kenny, Suarez, and Rush. And his bench mm -hmm. is there. Uh, Mo, Torres, Yabby, Ray, that's Ray Kennedy, and Virgil. Now, as of Virgil anywhere in that team, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for yeah, Carragher. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Emlyn News. Definitely Emily News there, left back. Uh, but a puff Phil Neal as well, the most decorated Liverpool player ever. The most decorated. I haven't heard from, uh, I hope he's all right, from uh, Jason. From Jason. Tavo. Evening, boys. Evening, Tavo. Evening, back. CW. Even if Frank and friends, I hope all is good. Yes. Yes. Daryl says, uh, Gomez now playing up, no injuries. I don't watch Don't say it then. <laughs> oh, don't That's it. like uh, when we had all those injuries, someone ended up saying, what would happen if Virgil gets injured now? I'm like, come on, why are you even saying that? <laughs> I, I never say that. No, no, no. No, certainly don't put the jinx on them. And uh, Paul Turner says, uh, even a Frank and everyone. Ian McHale is saying, even a Frank and chat up the red men. Bless. And uh, Chris Dick says, uh, isn't it mad having so many players risking injury, especially Ebu in the French squad after being Francia? I agree there. That's a, what do you think of that about? Uh, Big Canetto and going over while he's injured, mm -hmm. while he's bit, well, not being treated, you know, for his mm -hmm. injury and going over there. What do you think of that, JK? Um, I think even if he stayed at Liverpool, he would have ended up doing a bit of training anyway. Um, I think nowadays, what it is with football, they invite certain guys who who are not going to play, but because they're important part of the squad or the team, they end up going anyway, you know, for the morale, just to have, just to be there. Because they've got the Euros coming up soon. So, and I'm, I've heard Deschamps is not a big fan of Saliba. So, Kanate is sort of uh, a very important part of that squad. So, I think that's why he's probably gone, just to be around. the Because he's a nice guy, actually, Kanate. He's got a good... Good buzz about him, you know. He's always laughing, smiling, joking around and stuff off the field. So that's why I think he's gone. But I, I, he won't be playing. Yeah, I, I think that's a very good comment. And uh, you know what Ebu's like anyway. I just mm -hmm. want to say to him, uh, this will pay. And he says uh, a quick good evening, uh, Frank Carla. Uh, I you will. I uh, will. Uh, we go on some certain site. And it's an airport, and it's one of the most coldest places on the planet. And uh, they're all walking around when it comes, you know, like one above zero. 
up in uh, yeah. Greenland. <laughs> you know, they're all mm-hmm. sunbathing and everything. <laughs> it's just crazy. But thanks, Brill, for uh, popping in. Thank you so much. Hope to speak to you soon, very soon, that is. Um, thank you, mate. Paul Turner says, um, enjoyed watching back last night podcast regarding the 80s to the present day. Best team. I was surprised Terry Mack never got mentioned, but I don't think he, he would have made the first 11. That's a spot on. I, I was a great fan of Terry McDermott. I was a great fan of his because he was the, he never gets mentioned yet. And I've said this on many occasions, Paul. He scored, when I pick out three best goals ever scored for Liverpool Football Club, I always pick out two that came first and second. Terry McDermott, the other one was Jan Mulby's against uh, at Anfield against, um, against uh, Man United. But his first one was against Spurs and it was at Eze. When we beat them 7 0, it was the seventh goal. And not just because it was the seventh goal, it doesn't mean to say that. I just, oh, well, I like that, you know, it was the best ever goal. It was brilliant. One touch football from our area to the back of the net. It was unbelievable. Best, best, best club goal I've ever seen. Best. And the second one, also against Spurs, and I was down there. I was down there with my uncle Ronnie. Uh, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. And uh, it was a, 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 he caught us with his chest and his um, thigh. He was outside to the right at a very astute angle, angle. And he just hit it against Spurs at White Hart Lane. What a goal. What a goal. And, I, you know, it was like that with the two. Uh, so I picked the Anfield one. Just uh, so we scored the two best goals Terry McDermott have ever seen at Anfield. And if you ever try to catch them, you know they must be on Google somewhere or wherever. Catch those two goals and you'll see what I mean. Absolutely. And he scores another cracker as well against Everton at Main Road in a cup match when he chipped the goalkeeper. He just, the ball just came down. And he looked up and he just chipped it. What a goal. You know, so Terry Mack, yeah, I totally agree with you there, Paul. Totally. Taz Reynolds, bless up, Frank, mate. Thank you, Taz. Bless up. And uh, Gary Rigby says, uh, evening, Frank, when is it the next Liverpool game? And I think you've been answered there. Uh, you've all answered. Isn't that lovely? And uh, as Daniel says, Ebu is playing JK and starting tonight, yeah? Oh, that means he'll be ready for Sunday then. I'll take that from that. So I thought he wouldn't be playing today, so... Ah, surprise. So he must have been okay, okay. You know, not injured, injured sort of thing. So, okay, good. He'll be all okay for Sunday then, for Brighton. Well, that'll do, mate. That'll do yeah. me if he is, because I'd rather have no disrespect to young Kwanzaa, but I mm. think we need our best 11 for this yeah. running. I really do. Yeah. Seeing that without the FA Cup, we'll have time to recover now mm. between games. That's a that's a good sign that, to go after the league, to really go after the league. Yeah. And the uh, and the uh, the Europa as well. Uh, Will P says, "Frank, you missed a crash yesterday." Do you know what? I was looking. I was up there yesterday, and I was looking, and I heard like you know, I was looking at some comments, and I didn't know what it was, but I had to do something, uh, so I came off it. But you can let me know, Will P, if you're still with us. Uh, I was happy. I think it was a Cessna, wasn't it? To be honest, let's hope everyone's all right about this. And uh, Dad says, Ebu is starting, Frank, and tonight I'm losing 1-0. Uh, Red Bear, better never late than that. What is it? Better never than late, or is it the other way around? Don't confuse me. Please, Red Bear. <laughs> England's a <are> play. <playing. laughs> what is it? 
Anyway, uh, Red Bird, thank you, Red Bird. And an old shark and so on, another. Ah, uh, look at that. Yeah, there's one for you there. Bless you. Bless us. Ah, that's lovely. And uh, Paul Turner says, Terry Max scored two worlds. He's against Spurs with the Edder and the volley in the FA Cup. Thank you. I was just trying to explain. <laughs> I'm glad you know he's it. And they were the best goals I've ever seen from a Liverpool player in a club a, a club level. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, Paul Turner says, he scored two other great... Oh, blimey, he scored <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, and I'm Aberdeen, yeah, but that's what I tried to say before as well. I am a great uh, fan of Terry Mackle. I've got to admit. Uh, did you ever see any of those goals? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good goals. And what did you think? You know what? I, Terry Mackle, I've never really sort of connected to him, I would say, but I heard he was a he was a player and i've seen the clips of him playing and stuff so but i think he doesn't really get mentioned as much as the other guys i would say yeah you know Is it, um, it, can you can you help there uh Daz says frank when are you getting aussie on yeah yeah um the, th the thing is it's all about the timing because uh, he does these shows sort of late and stuff. Yeah. So if you can get the time uh, matches with us guys, then he, he will come on, he said. yeah. Uh, I just want to answer uh, Will P. Okay, I'll leave it to you. I'll leave it to Frank. Catch you again. Absolutely. I'll, I'll try and talk to you tomorrow on the uh, on the show, on the, the, the stream, Will P. Thank you so much for... Uh, Tuning in, and as Daryl says, uh, where's the rest, Frankie? <laughs> and I've just seen someone just, just sneak down, and it's my favourite ever fella. He's the best. And there he is, George. What a smile! What a little happy smile! Hi, George. Hey, Frankie. A bit late on tonight. I had a bit of a headache. It's cleared up a bit now, so I'm all right. You got a Eddie? I did have, yeah, so I wasn't sure whether I could come on tonight, but it seems to have cleared up, so I'm okay. Yeah, I'm fine. I'll tell you what, George, you know, if you were here sitting with me, I'd give you a bottle of scotch, so uh, <laughs> clear, clear your head, me. Yeah, either well, cue me or kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Good to see you. Hi, JK. Hello, bro. Hi. I hope you well. Good man. And... Uh, Dad says, where's Jamie? He be watching the match. He be watching the match. Paul Bay. He's part of a great midfield, Terry Mack. Absolutely. What did you think, George, of uh, Terry McDermott? Oh, he was a great player, Terry McDermott. Yeah, wonderful passer of the ball. Uh, he scored some wonderful goals. I mean, one of the goals he scored is one of the greatest goals ever seen at Anfield. I mean, uh, he scored. Didn't he score um, up at Aberdeen as well? Yeah, uh, yeah, that was mentioned. I was at that match, uh, European Cup. Um, they beat Aberdeen, my old club, one nil, and then we battered them on the on the uh, second leg. But yeah, what a player! What a player! Absolutely brilliant. I, I, you know, when you look at that midfield of Terry Mac Graham Sooness, oh, they as well, there, uh, you know, he was mingling in there a little there, you know. So, you had this Terry McDermott who scored phenomenal goals, and as you mentioned, there, uh, I always remember the seventh against Spurs, yeah. And he ran from our area and he just kept running, didn't he? he just kept running. Yeah. Then it was one touch football, and Stevie Highway just Stevie Highway, yeah. Boom. And he never yeah. scores then, it's because you're shame running away and he's like this, isn't he? Like, what's you know? <laughs> yeah, he's starting it as a absolutely brilliant. Love the man. Looked like Love a bit of a hippie. Man. What a player. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, as Errol Murray says, there he is, the great man, Georgie Scott. <laughs> Hiya, Daryl, mate. How you doing? Good to hear from you. 
I was at the launch of the Tommy Lawrence book last night, Frank. Very, very good indeed. Oh, was it? Was that a was that yet? It's sweet. No, no, it's uh, Peter Kenny Jones has written it. Oh, okay. But, um, okay. I've made some contributions to it, and Jeff did, oh. and Gordon Wallace did, and a few others. Uh, with a lot of nice people there. It was a media launch yesterday. The big one's next um, next Monday night at the church in Oakfield Road. Be a lot of people there for that one. Yeah, it's nice to see Tommy honoured in a book, you know, about his life. Mm -hmm. The great goalkeeper, mm -hmm. flying pig, sweeper keeper. <laughs> Before Clemo. Clemo took over from him, of course. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said about uh, Gordon Wallace being there, you know, because he, he always seems to get left out of things as well, George, doesn't he? Well, he's had a, new, a knee operation on his left leg and he's having the right one done in June, so I had to go and pick him up and drive him there. So uh, it's good he was there, you know, to share yeah, on the not... vacation. <clears throat> he made his debut. He made his debut with Tommy in the first team against West Bromwich Albion. Gordon he was only 17. Tommy made his debut in the same game. Go away. Yeah, That's and uh, he gave Don Howe. Don Howe was the West Brom right back, England right back, and Gordon took him to the cleaners. He had a lovely game. Jimmy Melia missed a penalty. They lost 1 0. But we were talking about that yesterday, and that was Tommy's debut as well, 1963. Very mm -hmm. early. It was between me and Gordon for the debut, but Gordon had a better left foot. <laughs> so he was on the left. He was on the left wing, and that you know, <laughs> he got the nod. And you've been the best of mates ever since, haven't you? Oh yeah, sixty-four years, yeah. Yeah, sixty-four. Well, I can't keep a mate for a week. I've been at sixty-four years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Norman says, "Remember Matt Day McGall at White Hart Lane?" Yes, that's what we were talking about, sir. Norman. Herbert Lom's brother. Stevie Stevie Iway didn't get a mention either. He made that goal for Terry against Spurs with a pin punt cross. Yeah, he just, just said that. Album, he just mentioned it. He said it, yeah. Yeah, you know, let's see this. So you like go, Herbert Lom. <laughs> Herbert Lom's. What a great name that is. <laughs> Herbert Lums, brother. We got some mad names. Daryl says, uh, Reeser and, uh, versus United, best goal I've ever seen at Anfield. I was there, took my bloody head off. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you see some uh, unbelievable goals when you're there. And uh, as Norman says, Ray Kennedy, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask the both of you here. Because again, Ray, Ray never, hardly ever gets mentioned, just like Terry. Well, he does get mentioned, but he gets mentioned like Terry in passing. Because when they talk about midfielders, when they talk about midfielders, George and JK, they always refer back, you know, the older generation refers back to Graham Souness. Am I right? They always yeah. refer back to Graham Souness. And like modern day uh, 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 the generation, modern day generation, their supporters always refer to Steven Gerrard and Xabi Alonso and Mascherano. You know, I'm not taking anything away from those three lads at all, nothing. But that's what I mean. So in passing, sometimes they just say, uh, Ray Kennedy was a cracker. Terry McDermott was a cracker, but that's <laughs> it. He never like elaborate on what they actually did. Yeah. George, go on. Well, Kennedy, when he was at Arsenal, was a striker, wasn't he? And yeah. then Bob Paisley uh, very astutely brought him back into midfield. He had a silken left foot, wonderful left foot. He could pass the ball through the eye of a needle and he made a lot of goals and he became a wonderful midfield player. One of the best Liverpool's ever had, I would say, you know. Um, very sad in recent years how he passed away with the, uh, I think it was Parkinson's disease, I think, you know. But, uh, yeah. He was a handsome guy as well and, you know, sort of looked the part on the pitch and, you know, he played a huge part in Bob Paisley's team that won so many trophies. So you'd never be I, forgotten. I was on uh, LFC TV. Uh, we were doing a live broadcast with, uh, I was on with uh, Jimmy Case and I was talking about... Uh, Ray Kennedy, 
because they, they I think him um, and someone else I think it was John Aldridge I think so I'm not I'm quite too sure but they were going up to uh, the northeast to see you know uh, like a, a, a day or so later when we were appearing here on the uh, the telly and uh, he said uh, he said I, I remember some of the lads you know could have been me could have been anybody you know tying his boot laces he couldn't even tie his boot laces running on the pitch you know couldn't tie them properly never forget that <laughs> and that's it. it's it, it's unbelievable <coughs> isn't it you know what but, well, well, you... jk did you ever uh did you ever uh, uh no you wouldn't have seen him but what did you think about uh, Ray Kennedy itself? You know, what you've seen of him and what you've, um, you know, sort of him on TV, that is, on film, and uh, what people have said about him. Yeah, but, like, uh, I know that we got him from Arsenal, and when he came from Arsenal, he was good for Arsenal as well. So I think the name Kennedy as well, sort of, is just like a big name. And, um, I think he's one of the sort of forgotten players as well. I think uh, the club could have done more for certain players that have gone in the past and actually looked after them. And because uh, the money in the game now is big, so I think uh, helping players who put ten years of their lives into a club, five years or whatever it is, uh, I think people like Kennedy <coughs> Sooners Sooners gets mentioned, of course. But you know, I think they can do more. The fans. And the club, actually, yeah. Yeah, to look after the ex-players. We were talking about that yeah. yesterday. You know, poor uh -huh. Tommy Lawrence. You had to play 10 years in the first team to get a testimonial back then, back in the uh -huh. 60s, 70s, 80s. And Tommy played nine years, six months, and never gave him a testimonial. And it made a huge difference to his life because he fell on quite hard times after football, ended up working in a factory, um, you know, and his life sort of got a little bit, out of control for a bit, then he got back on the straight and narrow again. But it was financial because the players weren't making money, and most of the players in my generation left school at 15 and with no education, no trade, no qualifications. So when the big day came, when they had to retire or kicked out or whatever, maybe age 30, 31, they had nothing to fall back on. So they ended up opening pubs or driving lorries or working in a factory. There was no money really like there is today to cushion the blow. Well, I used to have a, a scout, Frank Carlisle Scouts Night, and uh, I used to raise money for the ex-players. They had nothing. I remember talking to St. John one, one day and uh, Chris Lawley, and honestly, it, it was shocking. Yeah. And he couldn't hardly get any... T and do you know what? I, 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 think, I think I was instrumental in, in, in some of the things. I'm being honest. Uh, they, they wouldn't even get tickets for the game, George. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. I know. So I had a, I, the very first one I had for was for Chris Lawler. For Chris Lawler. Uh, a scouts night. And I uh, got hold of the mayor. And I said, listen, can you help us out? I said, we're trying to raise money for this man. I said, he's skint. So he said, yeah. And he's a, he was a blue, uh, Joe Anderson, of course. And he gave us the town off for not. All as we had to pay for, and Steve Evans, you know, <laughs> he comes on here. He yeah. was there that night. He was looking after uh, all the music and everything else because we had some great tunes on. We I remember to... that, Frank. I remember that. I remember Chris was outside the town hall and everybody was singing. There's only one Chris Lawler. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and Roger, and Chris Roger... Roger told me he yeah, did a lot for Tommy as well. Yeah, you know, and uh, Roger Hunt came. He yes. was there, you know, and uh, uh, Tommy Lawrence. Yeah, and the I big balls, yeah. yeah. I said, I'm going to have a mic for you as well. He said, are you? I said, yeah. You did, yeah. <laughs> and I brought him down to uh, to see Ricky Tomlinson when they had the green room. And uh, he went like that. He, he gave me money, Ricky. He said, give that to the... I said, OK, because he didn't like to hand it over. It's only a couple of hundred quid or whatever. And it's I went sad, like that to... Uh, it's it, it yeah. sad, you know. It's sad, Frank, when you think what these boys achieved, the legends they were. Now they turned this club round to what it is today. They ended up like, you know, having to be supported by somebody outside the club. Yeah. And they uh, fall back on hard times, you know. 
And now a lot of them have passed away with dementia or they're ill or they're sick, you know. Um, yeah, it's wonderful for players today. They've got a goal in future now. But in those days, it wasn't that, it wasn't like that. Exactly. And that's that, that, that's what it did. And we were uh, broadcasting it as well. What I mean is these lads don't get tickets. If they want to go to the game, they have to buy a bloody ticket. Yeah. And I think that resonated through and it got to the owners. Now they've got like little little parts to play, you know, by like meeting and greeting the fans. That's right. Cali does all that and Phil Neal and people to go there and they meet and greet and they get involved yeah. in it, you know, which is yeah. really good. Yeah. There you go. I always remember this, George, and I think it's one of my finest memories. Uh, I, I used to have a, a Saturday job, right? And it was uh, for s &H pink stamps. They used to have the green stamps, but I worked for a fair s &H pink stamps. I knew around the shop in London Road was uh, a, a lady named Kathy Kathleen. And I forget her surname now. And this is genuine, this. One day, soon after the, the FA Cup was won, one weekend, I'm standing there, you know, like a little dog, and in walks Callie. And he goes to see his Auntie Cathy. I didn't even know that Callie was her nephew. <laughs> she always knew that I went to match, you see. And he came in. And he was talking to her. I was in the front. And he came. I, 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 Kat, honestly, if you'd ask Kelly about this, this this thing, he came in to me and he went, Do you want to look at that? And I was, the medal. Yeah. I said, Can you hold it? He said, Yeah. So I was holding his medal, his FA Cup with his medal. And I couldn't six. believe it. And when yeah, I see him years later, George. And I mean, years later, I was talking to, I'll tell you where I've seen him. I've seen him in Rigby's, you know, the pub. Yeah. And I, said, I was chatting to him. I said, uh, you, you, I said, do you ever remember the, a young lad who worked in the uh, Fear Auntie Kathleen in London Road and the Pink Stamps? He went, that was you, wasn't it? I said, yeah. And he remembered. You would, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that lovely? He remembered. Well, yeah, that's great, Frank. That's great. Oh, he eventually lovely. got a World Cup medal as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. One. Got one, yeah. But I'd rather see the uh, the FA Cup because that was the first time we ever won the FA Cup. And he came <laughs> in. That's a moment, yeah. Yeah, because, because as Auntie Cathy said, he, he supports Liverpool, you know, and they're the lads. And uh, he came in. Went like that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, you know, uh, when I seen him, as I said, he remembered him. And I, and I, just lovely, just lovely. Oh, really, yeah. I don't know where the, the other fella is. Yeah, I'll be seeing him next week. I've seen him. I'll just, just, just remind him, please. I'll mention it, you know, I will. Just remind because he, he's such a lovely man. Such a lovely man. Absolutely. Ray Kennedy goal against Bayern away that took us to the European Cup final, says Herbert Lom's brother. I don't remember that. Well, I if Herbert Lom's brother said it, it must be true. I can't oh, remember yeah. it. But... I don't remember it. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, register at all. Do you have it? Oh, say, I can't, can't even ask. Uh, Depends two. which final it was. I wonder which Sorry? final that was. Yeah. We've been in so many, haven't we? We've been in nine. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What final? <clears throat> Maybe you'll come back and tell us a bit more. And our Steve says, um, Ray Kennedy, one of the most cultured midfielders I've ever had the pleasure to have watched. Yeah. Yeah. Ray Kennedy. Yeah, wonderful player. So listen, lads, George. Daniel, let's see. Yeah, let's see. I've not seen a better midfield in British football. Case Sunes, Kennedy, McDermott. Oh, wow. Yeah, well. Whoa. Just imagine having them running at you and creating. It's got everything, that, hasn't it? It's got everything. Skill, power, 
pace, the whole thing. And solidness. Passing ability. Do you know who was underrated, George, and JK? I'll tell you who was underrated. And he was a cracking footballer, good passer of a ball, big hard tackler. And he, he, you know, all they say is, oh yeah, Tommy Smith, the Anfield Iron. Yeah. He was a great footballer. He was a what great was footballer, yeah. I mean, when I, first, when I first came to Anfield, Tommy was centre forward. He was 15 years old, he's a big lad, you know, and he's centre forward and he scored goals. And it was only about when he moved into the A team, <laughs> where we all went, we all went through together, we all played together, and Tommy went back into right half, number four, mm-hmm. like a wing half, they called it, you know. And uh, that's where he stayed, really, until when he got into the big team, Shackley played a bit of a blinder because he put a number 10 on his back. Uh, although he was still playing number four, or right half, but he was playing number 10 on his back. And it, it confused people, you know. And as you say, Frank, he got the reputation of being, a, you know, a, a killer, you know, a hard man. And he was, but he was a really good footballer. That's what really. I mean, George. That's what I mean, George. He was yeah. a good footballer. And that's yeah, all, the, you know, he had the reputation of, you know, getting stuck here and whatever. And he always looked after Cali, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah, even in the reserve team, he looked after me. I mean, he was really, really, um, he looked fearsome. You know, he had that look about him that yeah. frightened people. Yeah. <laughs> he gave people nightmares, you know, because he did like playing that. again. Yeah. I always remember that Steve Kingdom from uh, Burnley, you know, playing yeah. Burnley. And I was in the, uh, what we call the Kenny Del Grease stand. And it was only a few rows up, you know, from the pitch. You know, you're looking up like that. Horrible spec. And uh, Steve Kingdom, and he beats him. You know, he beat, Steve Kingdom beat Tommy. <laughs> that was the end of test. Steve, he went on the other wing and Tommy went over on the other wing. So he yeah. just went off. That was it. That was the end of uh, Steve Kingdom. Never forget yeah. that. We it's played West Ham in the FA Youth Cup final at Anfield and he had the great player, John Sissons. He had him off the pitch in 10 minutes. You know, yeah. I mean, really, really hard. I'm going to go to our JK here. JK, now Paul Turner says, Bob Paisley said teams inquired more about Ray Kennedy than any other player. Now, obviously, no, I'm going to ask George that because I, I'm going to come back to you there, JK. I didn't know that. I didn't no. know that, George. I didn't know that either, but I can imagine that's that's true because no, he yeah. was such an exceptional part of Bob's team, as Kenny Dalglish, of course, was. Um, they were the key people that made things happen, you know, and Ray in midfield and with, with Sunas, of course, as just seen before, with Sunas and uh, the others in midfield. I mean, so I would imagine it's true that, you know, because I think it, a lot of clubs would have wanted him for his versatility and his skill. Not many players can play as a striker, scoring loads of goals and then convert into a, a midfield yeah. player successfully. You know, and he still scored goals from midfield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about uh, JK? You know, like with your generation, right? With your generation, JK, who would you pick out as like a midfielder that mm-hmm. hardly gets mentioned yet? He was brilliant. Who would you say? You know, like we've mentioned uh, Teddy McDermott and there, uh, and the other fella there, uh, Kennedy, Ray Kennedy, and even Jimmy Case came into the equation then for a uh, short while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I would say because I'm from like the Gerard era, so around that time, even Steve McMahon, I would say, yeah, never really gets mentioned. Um, for me, he was like one of the best DMs uh, out there. You know, uh, he never really gets mentioned by the Liverpool fans. No, I mentioned him the other day in a show, and everyone was like, "Yeah, Steve McMahon." You know, there was like straight away, so. I think because he played for Everton as well, didn't he, Steve McMahon? Maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he he played for Everton for a little while. I can't really remember the day, how long he played there, but I think he just gets forget uh, forgotten, uh, Steve McMahon, I would say. Yeah, we got him from Aston Villa, didn't we? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got him from Aston Villa. 
And, uh, you know, what a transformation when he played for Liverpool. He was, he was brilliant. Great football. Mm-hmm. And, and as hard as nails. Yeah, he was Gary Ablett played for Everton, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Gary Ablett went, and he won the FA Cup, didn't he? Yeah. Gary Ablett. Not, not with Everton, like, but with us. Whelan <laughs> <laughs> was, was a good midfield player as well, wasn't he? Ronnie Whelan. Yeah, Ronnie Whelan. Yeah. That's another player. Well, that's another player that hardly gets mentioned. That's right. And he was a great, great player, Irish international. I remember him, you know, he got injured and he was out for a while. And we didn't half miss him. And that was the first time that, you know, like a fan, an ordinary fan realised how good he was when he was out with the team. I know it sounds strange, but that's how you see uh, uh, pitiful players. That's, you know... that hems into the team, if you know what I mean. And when he went south because he was injured, he realised how good he was. Sounds yeah. that way. Bro. That's the way it is now. But you know what it is nowadays? You Most teams have got replacements, good as or sort of just around that same sort of level. You know, so football's changing that way. It's true, though, when a player goes missing, when a player's not... If he's injured, got a red card or something, and he misses a few games, you realise um, how good that player is for the team, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Whelan was like that, yeah. Well, I think I've seen Roddy Whelan last week on the Liverpool channel. Another yeah. guy like McMahon, who never really gets mentioned, I think. Um, Sunes is always on football. He's always on the TV talking football, so everyone remembers Sunes, but Whelan yeah. not so much. Well, visible. Man's De- <clears throat> never really been on no sort of football channel where he's talking about a game or anything, actually. Yeah. I'm waiting for someone to come on here and go, you know, one of the uh, the comments. What about Phil Bab? <laughs> I met Phil Bab. I met him. Oh, uh, well, very good. It's not the game, Phil <laughs> Bab. <like. laughs> not the Phil Bab was all right. I would say he was a journeyman. <laughs> and Chris Dixon, his LFC plays the 130 greatest goals, but left off some crackers like the late 60s. Emlyn Hughes running through from the box to from box to box and smashing it past Pat Jennings. Yeah, remember that. And you know what? Pat Jennings was one of the greatest goalkeepers, wasn't he? And he hardly gets mentioned. You know, when we talk yeah. about keepers, the best mm-hmm. goalkeeper for me in the entire world, I'm telling you now. Was Lev Yashin, the Russian? Ah, uh, the Russian. Yeah, he played till he was forty. Yeah, he was unbelievable, eh? Unbelievable. But when I seen Pat Jennings, I love Clements. You know, I loved him. I love Ali now. And I know I was at Anfield, and it was like a, a, a it was a funny sort of day, dampish, you know. And anyway, the ball went out. And you know the way you go down by the cop to pick the ball up? No ball boys then. And he went to, and he picked it up at one hand. Big hands, isn't it? Unbelievable. Pat Jennings for you. And it was a gentleman money, by the way. Apparently. Yeah, it was. And Zabel says, he had George Diaz is cooking again tonight. I don't care, Darrell, as long as he's cooking on Sunday, mate. Long as he's cooking yeah. on Sunday, that'll do well, me. Sunday dinner. <laughs> long as he don't get injured. Yeah, that's the main yeah, thing. Any international. Yeah. Here's a question for you. Did Ray play in the Arsenal double winning team? I think he did. I think he did. Yeah, because he won the, didn't he win the double against us? Yeah, he did. Well, he's not and that Graham, Graham fella. Yeah, he did play in the double winning team. Yeah, he did. I'm sure. I'm not somebody who'll correct me, but I'm sure. No, no, I think he did myself. I think, and I think when he, you know, when he did win the double, it was against us in the FA Cup final. I think he's already won the championship. Yeah. And he beat us, Charlie George. Got remember well, I was right? Stevie Highway scored for us. Yeah. And. Uh,
Norman says, uh, Kennedy, brilliant left foot, good in the air. He scored a goal at the baseball ground where he went through rounds at the keeper and slotted in. Class player. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So listen, George. Hang on, let's just see what Steve has to say. That goal of Munich in 1981 with his wrong foot as well, which took us to the Paris final. And the other Kennedy scored and the winner and admitting he had no idea how to celebrate it. Yeah. That's mad, that is. You know, I had no idea how to celebrate. <laughs> and he didn't, did he? They, yeah. uh, uh, Barney Noble. I had a nice outfit. I had a knife for him as well, Barney. Yeah. Came to me. They all came to me house. They were all in my house. St. John. Yeah, I had really. St. John. And it was a lovely summer's day. And could you imagine this? I had St. John sitting there. This is outside of the garden. And he had a garden. And St. John there. And George <laughs> Sefton. And George Sefton. Ah, uh, big so, George. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm here. He yeah, was there yesterday, know. George. Oh. He sent his regards. Oh, does he? Yeah. To me? Yeah. I did a photograph with him yesterday, yeah. I said, oh, I'm Frank's here. So I'll give Frank my regards. Ah, oh, thanks. Oh, brilliant. He loves me, Dorothy, you know. He loves our, our <laughs> He loves him. I mean, he loves, uh, you know, they have a little banter all the time. Just a lovely <laughs> man. Just a lovely man. It's fine, yeah. So anyway, you've been cleared up on that. What are you looking forward to, uh this week, George. Uh, uh, well, I mean, it's the weekend. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to having a strong team out. A few of the injured boys back. Maybe Kanate will be back. Um, you know, and we should have a pretty strong lineup available to us. And I think the atmosphere will be pretty electric as always. Um, Brighton are a good side, but you know, I, you know, I'd be very, very surprised if we don't roll them over. Um, it will be a good. I mean, it will be a good test to play some good football. Brighton, and one or two good players, and that Japanese lad, if he's fit on the left wing, uh, Mizumu, I forget his name. He's clever. So you know, yeah, they've got some good players. We need to watch them, but I think the boys will be up for it because they've had a nice rest now. The ones that are not, well, most of them are playing the internationals, I suppose, but at least they've had a couple of weeks where they can get the training sorted and get the tactics sorted, get over that defeat against United, which was obviously a bit of a, a bit of a downer for them. But, you know, I think we'll be up for it and I think we'll play well. We'll have a good team out, good midfield, good forward line and good back four. And, you know, I, I can't see us having a problem, Frank. OK, what about you, JK? Yeah, it's this international break's been a long, long time. <laughs> it's been yeah. a long one. I don't know why, but in a weird sort of way, I was I was sort of happy he came now because as Kanate, as the guys were saying, he's played tonight. So uh, getting a few guys back from injury is sort of uh, will be like a blessing, you know. Um, but all in all, Sunday I think is a home game. It's at Anfield. Uh, it's not an early kickoff, so it's a it's one of the late games. Um, game teams would have played on Saturday. Um, after us will be the Arsenal Man City game, so I'm happy it's in that order. It's not like Arsenal and Man City played on the Saturday and we were playing on the Sunday, so we know what we have to do on that in that game. I noticed that you know, unfortunately, we've got Coot refereeing and Tierney on VR. No, great. I mean, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, the guys that have been cheating us for a number of occasions are the ones that are running the show. Yeah, I'm glad you did find the word cheating because that's what it is. It's not robbing, it's cheating. Yeah, yeah. it's cheating. Um, it, it, it's just absolutely, it, it, it's critical. It's, it's become critical against Liverpool Football Club because yeah. it seems that no one wants us to win this league for some reason. I don't know whether it's through jealousy. I don't know whether I just don't mm -hmm. know what it is, and why jealousy. Liverpool is hated. I just don't understand it. So I just it don't. Is... Know. The fans are brilliant. Our fans are lovely people. 
Yeah. And yet, you know, yes. this is why I don't support England, George. I'm not being funny or anything. I don't support. I support Italy. I've always supported from a yeah, little boy. Obviously, even our kids, you know, our generation. Why do you support them? But it's been shocking, know. Frank. It's been shocking the decisions. I mean, really, I'm still not over that mm -hmm. one against City, the Doku one. Uh, Doku one. That was the most blatant, blatant piece of uh, judgment, worst piece of judgment I've ever seen in a football pitch. It was absolutely disgraceful. When you've seen uh, them on television being interviewed by Michael Owen trying to justify it, it was embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, it's really embarrassing, you know. I mean, yeah. I'm not just saying it's Liverpool. It's not just Liverpool. Other teams are getting bad decisions as well. But these were big decisions. That could change the whole concept of the Premier League, that one decision. Which was so blatantly wrong. But don't you think, though, you know, even if he did touch it with his toe, as people say, he touched it with his toe, you know, he touched it with, it's still dangerous play. The foul, the foul is anybody can see. The penalty should have been given, end up. Yeah. And no. Michael Oliver should have, I've always said Michael Oliver's the best uh, referee in the Premiership. And he should have given that. I mean, he said, he said he's he's in, show, he, 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 he realised that he should have given it. But for some he, reason, he was behind. He was behind uh, McAllister. He couldn't see where the ball was from his position. Yeah. And as soon as on that record, and the first thing he said was, not for me, not for me. Um, the, the ball's between them. And then the other guy said, McAllister's mm -hmm. moved into Deku, Deku's space. McAllister's trying to get his face away from Deku's, Deku's exactly. space. Exactly. His boot was up in his chest and came down and raked his chest in the penalty box. Come on. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And Michael Owen, didn't, Michael Owen was interviewing him and he didn't give him a tough time at all. He just sort of joking, matey, yeah. matey. You know, I was appalling, really. I was disgusted by it, really, as most Liverpool fans were. Most fans were. I've even had Man United fans um, and other clubs' fans coming on to me telling me, you were robbed there. That was a definite penalty. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind, you can't change it now, can we? No, we can't change it, but it should be discussed. That's yeah. what I mean. You know, everything is discussable. If that's a way you know, it's happening, yeah. it happening again. Yep. Exactly. Yesterday I heard um, the VAR, it was a Man City against Wolves, I think, where they got a goal and one of their guys was interfering in play and what you heard was the VAR team in the background. They were just discussing the matter. If you heard that piece, I'll, I'll try to get it to. I, I, I'll try to set, send it to you guys. Where there was so much chaos in the way they were talking, because I was saying, okay, the decision's going to go City's way. So if they were talking gentlemanly, where they're all peacefully <clears throat> getting on with the decision, they couldn't really hide the cheating. Where they gave Man City the goal. Because of the chaos, it was sort of looked uh, looked over, you know. If it was all in order and they were like, yeah, he's not really doing nothing, you know. The way the guys were talking in that piece, what I heard, showed me the level of cheating that's going on. So they tried to hide the cheating with the chaos behind the scenes. Where the way they were talking with each other, it was so embarrassing. I, uh, I'll get it sent to you guys. You, you can have a little listen to it. I think some guys might have heard it in the chat. And that shows you what level of mischief these guys are up to this season. You know, yeah. I can put, but there's about three, four, five occasions this season where they've made the wrong decision. And I think uh, that's why we're going to win the league this season. I think it's uh, it's them against us, you know. It's got, look, when United played us the other week, if you've seen all the content creators all teaming up against us, you had the Chelsea fans, United, Arsenal. They're all on Man United side because they know that we are the top dogs. You know, jealousy brings out the true colours of people, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Well, well Mark uh, Simon says, Stevie McMahon was the boy in, in my days and so ones at Aces, and he was. And uh, Norman says, when Shanks met Tommy Cooper, he asked what size shoes do you take? What size shoes do you take, Tommy? Size 15, sorry, he replied. Jesus Christ, that's shanks. 
I've I've seen some smaller boats than them. <laughs> I remember talking about talking about boots. Shanks, Bob Pearce went into Shanks's office, told him he Adidas had been on the phone because he he's been considered for the uh, manager of the year, and the first prize was a golden boot. I want, I want to know what size you take, and Shanks says, "If it's gold, tell him I'm a size 22." <laughs> <laughs> what's it in George what's it Bob, uh, Bob Paisley do with all those big bottles of uh, Bell's scotch I oh, know he's huge he had a happy <laughs> retirement <laughs> I know no one no knows what he did with them because I don't even think he drunk I've seen them <laughs> bottles in some pictures they were big <laughs> yeah they're huge huge well, Chris Dick says, uh, I remember that going mad in, at Wembley stands and my elder bro grabbing me and telling me it was disallowed. That was with the, uh, I think we mentioned this. I think we did, or I was talking to someone about it, and it was Alec Lindsay's uh, goal at Wembley. And the referee yeah. right afterwards said, I should have given it. Yes, there was right. nothing wrong with it. And yeah. he did admit it. Just as yeah. well we won the game, wasn't it? Just as well. And uh, Herbert Lum's brother says, Frank, do you, do you, did you go to the Wolves 76? Yeah, I was there. I, I ran on the pitch. Chris, I never yeah. ran on the pitch. The pitch was invaded, wasn't it? Was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Steve Kins and score for Wolves. What a night that was, Steve Kin. <laughs> Come to us. <laughs> and you know what? Daryl says, and he's right. Garcia never gets mentioned. He was a, he was amazing mm -hmm. for me. He was. He was good, wasn't he? Yeah. Good player. Really tricky. He's always, he's always bigging up Liverpool on uh, Twitter as well. Uh, he's sort of played in some legend games. Uh, yeah, I think Garcia. He went, he went to Atletico Madrid when Torres came to us around that time. So he sort of just sailed away as well. But for me, that Chelsea game, you know, is it was. <laughs> That was what he will be remembered for. Yeah, semi final of the European Cup. Golden goal, the ghost goal. Yep. yep. And that's KG says here. You must remember this, George. I don't know about you, JK. Whelan's Keller against Bailey. What a yeah. goal. Yeah, Man United, yeah. That was. Did we discuss that? Did, did, did we yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, we did, didn't we? What a, so, what but a you're right there, KD. Yeah, you're so right. McMahon was a ferocious tackler, scored great goals, ran all day long, and that assist against Arsenal where he won the ball on the touchline is still probably one of the greatest assists ever. Yeah, right. That yeah. was nice unbelievable. That. When he, the ball was going out and he ran after it. And he pulled yeah. a, a player was being, and he beat the player. All in one movement went through. Put it. Put it in, go. And as they said, one of the greatest assists ever. He had a great engine. <clears throat> oh, he had a wonderful engine. Yeah. Wonderful. <sighs> right, so, so right, uh, JK, did I ask you? I'm sorry, I'm sort of going on there. And... <laughs> yeah, let's go. Look at this one. There's this, there's one. Steve LFC. What about Kariakis? Oh, he never gets mentioned, though, does he? The big, the big, <laughs> the Greek, the big yeah. Greek. <laughs> what is it? Oh, I don't know. The strange yeah. sign of he was. Bradley scored against Scotland tonight. Says LFC Adam. Oh, don't give me that bad news. That's what I mean. They're all watching the matches. Did bad news about Scotland. I think Robertson's come off injured. Um... Gomez came on for Stones because Stones got injured and Gomez came on for him in the England game, I think. But I'm not sure about what Robertson, what sort of, uh, what's happened to him. But I know Bradley scored in that game. You know, these are friendlies. Yeah. And yeah I know. You know, no matter what team you come from, and these players are getting stuck in. What for? Yeah, yeah representing your country, aren't you? 
Yeah, but they're in a friendly. Yeah, I know. It's that we always seem to get yeah, these injuries, you know. Always. I think because uh, Scotland are playing in the summer. I think they want to get a first eleven ready playing together before the yeah, Euros. You know? Euros. That's why. Yeah. No, I understand that. I really do. I don't. You know, you've got the bloody summer to come to. Why can't they just train like they, they did years ago? It's hard Please on the club. As a club's pay the wages, and you know, and they get they get injured in a friendly, and you're out for six weeks. Exactly. It's not much fun. You know, we used to have. Um, remember the uh, George, England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Home, interna home internationals. They were great. They were great uh, warm ups. We can't all just played each other. Up. All played each other in a summer, didn't we? And it's a league table. It was great. Exactly. Full houses, passion, great. I remember Scotland beating England at Wembley. We broke the, the crossbar. That was 1967 because Liverpool, England were the world champions and then Scotland proclaimed themselves world champions because they beat the world champions. The Tartan it's Army was going to all drunk in the bagpipes. <laughs> but I always remember how the... Uh, you know how the media said that they were hooligans because of the, of the Wembley and they uh, you know breaking the bar of sods off. Nobody was injured, it wasn't violent. Good humor. I didn't know where uh, but uh, you know where but Lum's brother says Pat Jennings said two penalties at Anfield. I think the only keeper to do so. I don't remember that. But you know, obviously it's true because these are all there. Uh, so many games. Paisley said to Barney Rubble when Kennedy gave a goal away, they shot the wrong bloody Kennedy. Yeah, that's true. Stop <laughs> be saying things like <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rubble went off as well, injured. Christ almighty. When the last injury in his shoulder was that international as well, wasn't it? Broken shoulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in an international as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. How long was he out for? Months. Bonkers says Liverpool left back. Andy Robertson has been forced off for Scotland through injury. Yeah. Tarrell Merry. Amstring. That's him out for the season then, actually. He just come back as well, you know. Yeah. Well, at least we've got Gomez and we've got Stimikas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. KG. And this is what... The, the, was I talking to you today, uh, JK? Uh, mm -hmm. it was a, I was talking to someone. And um, I was talking about this... Oliver, I'm going over to uh, the Middle East. Yeah, this is it. This is what the problem is. Oh, and he's not you know, going over there. It's given to, against uh, Manchester City. And as uh, Norman says, sick of international football and Steve Clark keeps overplaying Robertson. Fergie would have pulled his players from international footy if it was a title running. Would you re say, Steve LFC, would you agree with that, George? Fergie would pull all his players from international duty if it was a title running. Yeah, he'd probably find a way to keep him up with injury, with, with injuries that weren't injuries, and take a fine. You know, if you got fined, yeah. they say, oh, fair enough, I'll pay the fine, but you're not playing. Mm -hmm. You know what it is nowadays as well, uh, Frank and George, is that social media and people are just, they'll be straight away writing this, that and the other and then everyone else will be retweeting it and liking it and this, that and the other. And in the old days, you could get away with it, you know? So yeah. it's a different ball game nowadays. That's true. Yeah, that's true. In the old days, you could do that and nobody would worry too much about it. Today, it would be a huge issue if we started to try and stop players playing. Yeah. 
trouble is most players want to play for the country. Yeah, this is a Manchester United fan. Four three. Four three. Seven nil. Seven nil. Seven nil. Stop that. Uh. I'm five nil up there. Remember? And five nil. Yeah. The no and, four two. and four two. Unbelievable. And as Daryl says, Frank Block, this is it. Frank Block, Steve Ella, Frank Block, this Manx spammer. I can't, I can't do anything. I can't block anything. You don't need to block him, you make a fool of himself. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, listen, uh, Manx lads, just press the like button <laughs> and yeah. subscribe. Get my algorithm up there. <laughs> Keep it moving up. Yeah, block this fella. That's terrible, isn't it? They were very, very lucky to be us. You were talking to me, fella. Oh, yeah, I was talking to you about uh, that thing. Yeah, you're right. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. Uh, to be honest, right, some of these players need to use their heads when it comes to friendlies, especially when you're challenging for honours. I've said that time and time again. Oh, right. I've said it. That's why I said, is this just a friendly? And they're going in. There's Robertson now, so, you know, out. And they're now, as you said, George, if it's a hamstring, if there is an hamstring, that's the At season. At least six gone. weeks, isn't it? Yeah, that's the season gone. And look at the yeah, year they're running we've got. You know how Robertson plays. Running. Like Robertson goes in head first, like he's always running around like a madman, Robertson. That's his that's yeah. the way he plays. So for him to pull a hamstring is uh it's quite, no wonder, you know. Um but Virgil's playing now against uh, Germany. Uh the way Virgil plays his football, he's very he uses his brain, he yeah. isn't running headless, you know, so I think Robertson will see what his sort of situation is. Uh, lucky enough, we've got the Greek lad and Gomez. You can play that position. Yes. Yeah. So now we've got to look towards uh, Samikas now. And Samikas has just come back from a broken collarbone. Yeah, but he's fit, isn't he? Yeah, but the point is, it's like anything else. Uh, it, Remember um, Virgil? Now, when Virgil came back, you know, his first season after being, you know, out for the season, they were all made up that he was back. But he wasn't back to his best because he, he admitted, didn't he, just uh, about, I don't know, six or seven, two, couple of months ago, he said, I was afraid when I first came back last season. Yeah, getting yeah. injured, he said, but not now. He said, and this is why, because someone said, you know, you're back to your best. And he said, because I'm not afraid anymore, not like last season. I was afraid of getting injured again. So, you know, Samikas, he could be just holding back. I don't know. I, I, I like Samikas, I'm being honest. You know, he's, We've even got Gomez, haven't we? He can play left back as well. Exactly, exactly. And Bradley so, on the right. And Trent, Trent must be coming back soon, surely. Yeah. And um A. McHale says looks like uh, ankle took a heavy challenge from uh, one of the Northern Irish lads. Hopefully it's not too serious. Oh well, yeah, that that's a little bit of uh, yeah. comfort, isn't it? And uh, Norman says, I was sat behind Ajax drug out on Saturday. I got Babble autograph, tried to get Lipman and Steward had a go at me, so I didn't get it. Why did the steward have a go at me? Yeah. Okay. yeah. What do you want to do with the steward? What is it's it a, exactly? It's a friendly game. Charity game. Jeez, is it? I don't understand that. I really don't understand that. I don't know. Uh, I, 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 I think don't, the old guys, I think the old guys would, they find it, they would like it, you know, like when, when the fans ask for their autographs, you know, like, um, 
the old guys have they've retired, so when they come and play a game, like they won't play it, they're not playing every week, they're playing once a year, maybe. And so when the fans are asking for his autograph, they'd be delighted to do that, you know. I think sometimes like you get seeing games where the they've got fans saying, Can I have your shirt? They've made like placards <laughs> for the game, you know, football's changing, but when stewards are like the stewards should just be just there. If guys acting like an idiot or something, but when a guy's ask, yeah. asking for an autograph, come on! You, you think know? a steward would take his book and give the book to Lippman and, and ask him to sign it? No, no. Well, I've known, I've, yeah, I've known a couple of people who do that. To be honest, when I've asked, but maybe you know, why is he lost me? You know, so piss off. You know, you, you, you get them people. Yeah, you get their uniform on and then they become jobs worth. Right. I'm going to talk about these three here. Two. Mark Bertil to be named LFC new chief scout tomorrow, says Daryl Merry. Mark Simons, are you getting ready for this, boys? Mark Simons. What do you guys think about Trent being tapped up by Bellingham from Madrid, says Mark Simons. Don't forget Mark lives over there. I just get fed up to the back teeth with these rumours and these media stories and it's Fabrizio, whatever his name is, coming out with these hot-button exclusives and all this rubbish, you know, just to get clickbait, to get people to buy papers, click on the websites, you know. I'll believe it when I see it, to be honest, you know. As far as I'm concerned, Trent's a scouser. Trent's a scouser, born and bred in Liverpool, wants to be captain of the club. Fantastic player. Uh, tell Bellingham to do one. That's what I would say. You know, you know let, Real, let Real Madrid go and get Mbappe or one of somebody else and leave our boys alone. Just get out of our hair and leave us alone. We don't need it. You know <laughs> what? Funny. I think, no, I, you're so right. You're so right. Because as you know, and as JK knows, Trent's ambition, and you see him talking as a, you know, when he first started playing in the big team, in the first team. Yeah. And he said, uh, I want to be captain one day. You know, because he says, you know, playing for your uh, team. And he says, yeah, he said, I want to be captain one day. And there you go. It's as simple as that. And one day he will be captain. That's why he's vice captain now. And he knows that he will be captain. Captain of his boiled dream. His boiled dream. Yeah. His boiled absolutely. dream is to play for the Real Madrid. You but know, I, the same people who are coming up with this Trent stories are the same people who said Bellingham's come to Liverpool. Exactly. So, <laughs> you know, uh, me personally, I don't really jump in on on the trains, you know, the all this transfer speculation and stuff because you're gonna end up wasting your time. Liverpool, like Trent is the vice captain of Liverpool. And uh more likely vice captains become captains in the future. So yeah. it's fun then have to it's all paper talk. That's the way the world is. It's always been like that. And is, got, yeah. and especially in this international break, there's nothing to talk about really. So they're gonna end up coming up with these stories, you know. But it yeah. is frightening. The latest though. story. Latest, sorry, Frank. No, I'm just saying. Gonna, the no. latest story was Gareth South. Gareth Southgate's now being touted by <laughs> um, Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. Len Johnson yeah. being Liverpool's next manager. How rubbish is that? What's exactly. that all about? What's exactly. that all about? You know, I don't know what I was going to say. Any, but it's one of those things, George. It's one of those things. And when you look at the bigger picture over Trent. You know, it is frightening because we know no matter what says, done or anything, there's always spin behind something. Always, don't forget. Always spin, and yeah. Trent, if there's big money, I'm not talking about Trent as the, the, the individual. If Trent and there's more big money there, you know I what I mean? mean? I don't know. I'm, a I'm not talking about like Ben saying, yeah, I want to go. I want to go. I want to go to the Netherlands and just be, uh, you know, my ambition. What I'm talking about is behind them. And I'm talking about the people who run the club. 
That's what I'm saying. If FSG want to disconnect with the fans, selling Trent as a, a scouser who plays for Liverpool is the wrong thing to do, you know. I, I was always saying, you know, like these guys, uh, they've got fans who favour them, some guys who don't favour them. I think the so, uh, the Jan January transfer window we just had was sort of a blessing for FSG, you know, Thought thinking, hey, we don't have to put our hands in our pockets this uh, winter. We probably needed a DM, so they got away with that one, not bringing Andre in, for example. Um, so with this summer coming up, you've got Salah and you've got Trent, two guys who they could sell to fund the next new manager who's going to come in, his transfer uh, basket. So I can't really see Trent going myself. Personally, I, I wouldn't see him want to leave Liverpool, you know. Uh, and people put things up together. Look, look, come on. Bradley came onto the scene. All of a sudden, Bradley came on the scene. Everyone started talking about Trent was going to leave. Yeah. Come on, man. What are these no, people talking about that. half the time? Yeah, it's it is. amazing. Yeah. It's a good point there, actually. Yeah. Paul Taylor says, uh, Carl understands why students get involved with someone wanting an autograph, yet they let a kid go on the pitch for a selfie with Stevie Gerrard. Well, yeah. out any problem, and that's the hypocritical stupidity of some stewards. Yeah, but uh, Romy, Romy Ron Kenobi, <laughs> he says, Money talks in this day and age of football, and um, he says, There we will sign Perro, Perro to replace Carvalho, whatever his name is. So, yeah, yeah but he used to play for Barcelona, Porro. Yeah. So, no, he may yeah. he might not want to do that. You never know. Yeah, you're right when you say money talks, but you don't forget these guys are already multimillionaires. You know, already Trent's already a multimillionaire. He's only 24. Grass is always greener on the other side, but you've got to adapt to new society, new new teammates, new language. You know, why would you go to Real Madrid when you could be captain of Liverpool? Come on, why? Yeah. Only because the agent might try and push you there. The agent's on a 10% cut. I can't see FSG pushing him out because it's down to Trent. If Trent turns to FM, FSG and says, look, my contract's up, I'm not signing another one. Fair enough. And if he wants to go, let him go. I don't want him to be here. don't want to be here. And especially yeah, look at the figure they're mentioning as well, George. They're talking about 60 to 80 million. Come on. If Trent on his day... He can fetch 130, 140, you know. He's a young man. He's a superstar. Yeah. Get on to this, lads. Get on to this. This is a crack in this. It's just not made me out on this. Donald Merry says, uh, Real Madrid found some oil money from somewhere. How do you ever been done for breach? Roll me one canoe, he says. Donald. We're the highest earners of revenue and have uh, over 100,000 socials. More than that. <laughs> I'm, totally close to him. I'm only messing. <laughs> the only one up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only messing. The only one. <laughs> Don't shoot me. I'm the messenger. Uh, you know, you can't get. You, you couldn't write a script. <laughs> you couldn't write a script. Absolutely. Oh, Brilliant. Love you. Go oh. in, Daryl. Oh. Oh. You can, you can oh, so it's, uh, Real Madrid, Daryl are Europe's most corrupt club. They, can, they have consistently bullied their way to get players over the years. There, there are question marks over the first five European Cups they won. I don't. I think roll me over, roll me one can over, but <laughs> he did say that Figo went to uh, from Barcelona to Real Madrid. It used to happen in the old days. Yeah, like, they re used to vote for the chairman, didn't they? The big election for the chairman, and they're all multi-millionaires. You know, same with the Agnellis at Juventus. Well, Chris well, Jackson think, of uh, Montenegro says estimated over 500 million followers are on LFC worldwide. Yeah. That's half a billion people who follow us. 
Do you know the um, shirts, the sales of the shirts? We're number three in the world. Yeah. It was published this morning. Um, number one's Real Madrid, number two, Barcelona, and we're number three, I think. And Man City is not even in the top ten. There you go. Worldwide shirt sales. Shirt sales. Seasons all. I've got the shirt on here. Look at this. Look. Well, it's not a shirt. It's a it's a nosy and a cracker. It's not that. Mm -hmm. It's not that, Frankie. <laughs> Which one was that with the, yeah, the creature from the Black Lagoon? <laughs> if I put the other one, I'd see you. put the video on, that would look cool. <laughs> I would be like a fella from the Black scary, Lagoon man. with glasses on. With glasses on. But, you know, our Francine knows a lad and. Um, she knows this lad, you know, and he does these. And she said, will you wear one, Dad? So I said, yeah. So anyway, I had to buy two of them. I've got this one and a, and a black one. So I said, yeah, I'll wear them for them, you know, no problem. You know, on the footy show. Because I've got um, one of the, you know, the, 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 uh, the Axel ones. You know, the Nike Axle ones got one of them. I'm gonna wear that tonight, but anyway, smart. Sabal says, I've got everyone talking <laughs> and laughing. I'm laughing, yeah. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. you know what. Oh, can, you you? Oh, can you? Can 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 anyone tell me how Allison is? Because <laughs> I've been trying to look, and you know, is he getting any fitter or what? It's I heard he's on his way back. That's what I heard today. Yeah, he can't be much longer. Is he training? Yeah, he can't be much longer now. I mean, he's been off for a while. He may be. Straight. Yeah. But fair play to uh, Kelleher. Well, he's back for the Man United well. game, eh? Hope he's back for the Man United game at Old Trafford. Yeah. And Jota, I hope. Curtis should be back soon. Um, yeah. We've got so many injuries, you know, when you really, really look at it. We've done pretty well in the last two months, considering, really? okay, we lost to United. Okay, that was the only sort of mark on the whole two three months where we've had everyone injured but fair play we've done we've kept up we've kept up fantastic we shouldn't have lost united either uh, yeah. they were and as, Ro as roll me can roll me one can always says i'm sure fsg aren't all saints because everyone's going on at, about um veil uh, it's true because when you look at the, the European Super League, who are the main pushers of that? It's the two Spanish giants, the Aventas, and undercover Liverpool are FSG, you yeah. know? So you've got to understand most of the majority of guys who own clubs want to make money out of it. Well, that's know? where they are. That's where they that's are. That's all it is. They're only making yeah. investors, aren't they? They are. That's where they are. The owners are not the old owners, you know, like there'd be boyhood Liverpool fans or boyhood Everton fans where they've stayed up and ended up owning the club. And their main ambition is for to win, you know. And even when you win, the bonuses come, you know, the money comes in, the shirt sales, the posters, this, that and the other, you know. So yeah. success on the pitch will bring success off the pitch. Um, it depends on how you want to get that success on the pitch. Do you want to chuck millions and millions at it? Like say Chelsea have done, or do you want to do it the shrewd way, where the way FSG have sort of done it, you know, um, bringing in bargains. Robertson's for seven million, Salah, Mane cost seventy million together. Bargains when you really look at it. There's not many <laughs> owners, not many owners in the Premier League you can think of who are good owners, are there? I can't think of not any really. that are good owners. Yeah. Any of them, the De Glazers no. aren't. The guy at Chelsea isn't. Um, Arsenal, Arsenal is in the, the the guy. Uh, they've only started spending now, yeah. Newcastle, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, they've all got their, they're all, they're all these 
capitalist businessmen. All they want to do is make money. Treat they treat the supporters like customers, not fans. Exactly. You know? exactly. I mean, and, you know, I don't know what the answer is because without them, you can't survive. Unfortunately, we need sure. the owners. You know, this well, new guy, Man United, as well. He wants to build the Wembley of the North and all this nonsense. You know, they come mm-hmm. in with all these big plans. You know, uh, even if FSG, would you be getting their place? Yeah, George, George, who do you think in the last seven years has been Liverpool's best buy? Best buy? Best buy. Yeah. Liverpool's best buy in the last... Well, it's got to be... Uh, yeah. I, know, I know what you're going to say. I know where you're coming from. Van Dijk and Alisson. We only got them because of Coutinho's sale. Okay. J.K.? Mm-hmm. I would agree with George. I think as soon as we brought them two guys in, we sort of stepped up. But when you're looking at the mini side, they were a bit more expensive than a few others. I would go with Robertson for the price. And, and Endo. I would, oh, yeah. And Endo as well, of course. You know, he took him in there. And also Salah. I think Salah's figure, I think it was 37. Come on. 37 million, like yeah, that's Salah, guy's wages yeah, nowadays. Yeah. He's our biggest Salah. signing, yeah. Biggest yeah, Salah. Salah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salah, yeah. He's, he's proved everybody wrong, hasn't yeah. he? Really, you know, Pundit's yeah. name is proved a leading goal scorer for the last seven years. Yeah, no, yeah. think about you can't it. mess with him. Yeah, it's going to be the best. Uh, you like Salah, football, Frank. Frank. Of course, of course. Yeah. And yes, you know, you're still getting divvies today, saying sell them. And <laughs> these are on other posts. Sell them. Uh, yeah, yeah, we get money for them. They sell them. Mm-hmm. Not realising, you know, what he's done. And he's only played a couple of games since uh, the 1st of uh, January. Yeah. And he's yeah. still leading goal scorer. And they say, get rid of him. Yeah. Shut up. No, yeah. Yeah, but when you look at FSG, <laughs> when you look at FSG, Frank, he yeah. is sort of a prime FSG asset to move on, considering his age as well. They took that in uh, to sort of bring the next guy in and give him a bit of something to spend, you know. Um, that, that's the only way I could see Salah leaving. I think if Salah was 26, 27, his fans would be more angry about this topic. I think a lot of fans are saying it because of his age. But for me, Salah can play another two years. Even yeah. Virgil, He's another here. two, two, three years. Look at the guy's physique. Him and Virgil yeah. are they're prime, prime athletes, you know. The so beasts. for me, they can play on. Yeah. The beasts, the pair yeah. of them. Yeah. You've mm-hmm. got Alison, the the finest goalkeeper in the world. Yeah. You've got Kelleher, who could walk into uh, most Premiership uh, clubs. Today, it's walked straight into the team. Keller has brilliant, Frank. But I think if Allison had been playing against United, I think we would have won because I think yeah. Allison yeah. would have got that last goal. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think you extra to inches. The post. Yeah. No, I, I, I fully Only understand. That. I fully understand that. That's why, uh, you know, it's pivotal that we get him fit. Allison fit. You know, if there's anyone. That we need to be fit, it's Allison. It is. It is. Yeah, it's and Jota, because it's I don't good. care what anyone says, Jota, he's a natural goal scorer. Yeah. He's a natural, he, he's, he just gets into places, but, and he just hits them. Yeah. He's so quick. And, yeah. you know, that's what, that's what we, that's what we uh, and roll me, roll me one can always say is Virgil is a goat, can't lie, and he is, he's an yeah. absolute, he's a yeah. See if you go for the uh, say like for next season, I think I mentioned it. I don't know whether it is or not, George. I said I, I went from the goalkeeper up, and I said the players that we have to keep. And it's the spine. Yeah, the strength of every team. The spine. It is, and that's the spine. You know, you you go from Allison, then you go to VVD. No, you don't. You go to... (laughs) 
Yeah, you go from Allison, Allison to uh, yeah, you know, Virgil, and then you go straight. To, and I've got to say, Sally, you know, those three, uh, and I'm sorry, and McAllister, you know, in the middle, yeah, you, 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 you go to them, and then you spread it out. Then you've yeah. got to bring Jotter in. Yeah, now, yeah. United. Yeah. yeah, then you got you know where you spread out from uh, Virgil, you know you've got to have Conaté, you've got to have Robertson, you've got to have Trent, wherever yeah. you're going to play. If you got or Bradley, say like we take Trent out of the equation and put Bradley there, because I think Bradley is brilliant. Yes. Yes. Great defender, great goal forward, and he can score. He has a goal. He has a goal. And then, you know, and, uh, midfield for uh, Trent. But you've got to have McAllister there. You've got to have McAllister there. Uh, Endo, I think, as well at the moment. Yeah, no, I, I'm not saying that, George. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we're spreading it out. And then well, you've got the likes of uh, Salah, you've got Nunes, and you've got Jota. And you've got Diaz as well, because I want them to keep Diaz. Yeah. So well, we have a great side. We have a great team. We've got a great 11. Do you see how similar it is, Frank? Do you see how similar it is to Shankly? Exactly yeah. the same as Klopp, Shankly. Yeah. You had Lawrence yeah. and then you had Yates and then you had St. Yeah. John and you spread out to Callaghan and and Thompson, and you got the midfield in like Smithy and Milne, and you've yeah. said exactly the same about the current team there. What a, you mentioned a player there, and this fella, I'm, I'm sorry, JK, but this goes back uh, to like uh, George's day, uh, and I remember this fella myself, Gordon Milne. Yeah. What a player. Yeah. Yeah, he was wonderful. He was a bit like Phelan, wasn't he? He used to be push the ball around, catch it, push it on, keep it moving, never give it away. Always in control. Yeah, he was. Oh, yeah. I was in my Auntie Mary's, George. You're going to like this, mate. I was in my Auntie Mary's and there was a knock at the door. And anyway, our young Mary, you know, like a daughter. She goes to answer the door and she said, I won't be a minute. And, uh, you know, to the person at the door. So anyway, she walks back in. We're just sitting down, you know, acting soft as you do. And uh, so I think it was our Angela says, who's that? She said, oh, some, some fella, he's taking me out. He's some footballer. So I get up and I walks out and I'm looking like that. I'm going, do you know who it was? Gordon Mill. <laughs> it's a Jerry Gardens to take our Mario. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, but he's, he's still he's still well today, Gordon. He's still well, lives down south in oh, good health. That's nice. That's nice. That's lovely because he's a, he, he, you know I never spoke to him, I was in awe, oh, you know, I, I just couldn't believe it. Some footballer wants to take me out, and I was in. You used to live in McCall. I think this is before he was married, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Still married, I think. What are these saying here? They're all talking to one another. They're all talking. Even the... You know, Norma says he went on to manage Leicester, didn't he, George? That's yeah, Mill. He's, he's just written his biography, it's just came out about a few months ago. Oh, I've got to get, I've got to ask you this, George. Your name's gonna stand up, mate. Which you one? <laughs> which hair or which uh, yeah. message? <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Yes, like a map of the moon. Yeah. Roll me one Kenobi. Now don't forget roll me one. Is it um he's, a, he's a big Madrid fan? No, right? Real Madrid, yeah. sorry, yeah, yeah. And he says, right. uh, would you sell Robertson for Nuri? Um is Nuri the guy at Wolves? Yeah. He looks a good player to be fair, but you know, I mean he's not been around for a long time, as he seems to have 
seems to have jumped on the scene just recently. Had a couple of good goals, a couple of good appearances. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sell Robertson at the moment. Well, Robertson's. Uh, this is the experience we need. That's what I'm thinking. Season. That's what I'm thinking. You know, he's been there, done it, seen it. You know, he's part of the squad. Has been so successful. Hopefully, his injury tonight's not too serious. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. as one of the lads said, as one of the lads said, um, you know, it, it, it's just his ankle rather than what we feared most was the hamstring. Yeah. So let's we'll hope that. But Outnor is a good player. I've seen him play. Um, he's good on the ball. Yeah, he looks useful. He looks good, yeah. Uh, is he good enough for Liverpool? Um, you can't really say, you know what I'm saying? Um, but he's a good player. But some of the lads are saying here, um, Robbo, Darrell says, uh, Robbo was going in the summer. Sorry, George. That's what he says. And uh, Robertson for from Fulham, maybe. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Yeah. yeah. Do you know I like I like that uh, lad of Chelsea, Palmer, is it? Cole Palmer. I think he's good. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's a class player, a young player. I think he's he's been a revelation at Chelsea. <laughs> Well, KD says uh, left back needs an upgrade. We have to sell one of them, I'd say. I mentioned this earlier. Yeah, I, I do think Rob was coming towards the end of his glory days, to be fair. I think, yeah, you know, he's not quite at the level he was a year or two ago. So it could be Daryl's right. You know, it could be that he is maybe going to be on his way. Um, but, you know, I'd like, I don't like to see that. I'd love to see him stay another year. You know what it is? Sure. Everyone's saying about Robertson and uh, Simicast, but I'm saying we need two left backs who are fit. We, we do. We do. Yeah. Need. I think people forget yeah. it's a squad game. Uh, it's not just the first eleven. We Very much need so. Subs. Yeah. Yeah. I think footballers. I think fans like okay for be um, Matip and Thiago. I think they'll be moved on. They're more realistic guys who are going to leave. You know, but when you look at Robertson and Simicast. They could do another year with the new manager, yeah. you know. New manager, new energy. Uh, Robertson may be injured today. So, like, we need these guys. You, you need know? the squad, don't you, JK? You need the squad. You need <laughs> Gomez there as well. You need, exactly. you need Trent and, and, and Bradley. You know, you need that backup in every position. But even Gomez got a bit of backlash um, last year. Even Virgil, Klopp even got backlash last year. And I'm thinking this new era of the football fans, no patience, hence why no success. You know, you have to give a guy, like the new guy who's come in. If he don't win his first three games and he's probably, say if he loses them, the amount of stress he will be getting on social media because he lost them three games, instead of fans saying, you know what, he's a new guy in, like give him a chance. Do you remember De Boer for Crystal Palace after yeah. four games he got sacked? That just showed me everything about football. I was like, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Shandley lost his first few games when he came to Liverpool. Um, Ferguson lost the, his games when he came to United. He almost lost his job. Mark Robbins yeah. scored at the top and I think saved him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the end of the day, you need patience. You need to give give people a better time. It's hard to get time these days with social media. Well, I think, That's uh, what I was saying about social media, how it's become a problem. It's taken away the patience <laughs> from the game. Social media straight away, bang, bang, bang. Everyone's just jumping on the guy's back, not realizing the guy's got a phone in his hand and he can check everything if he wants to, you know? Yeah. Funny. But I, uh, I think that, um, I think that if we do sell, it'll be more or less the fringe players, if you know what I mean. I really do. I really believe. That uh, it'll be the fringe players and there's some fringe players there. Now, there's uh, Herbert Long's brother. He says, How can Gapco be the worst signer? Forgot about Carrius, have you? Robertson, the best signing. Now, Carrius, to me, and I said at the time, I always remember uh, Klopp coming out and saying, We've just signed the second best goalkeeper in Germany. 
And I said, uh, uh, yeah, I'll follow you, And we signed him today. I just said, Jürgen, we don't want the second best mate. We want the best. Eventually, he did buy the best. I didn't like Carius one iota. I just never liked that. And when we were playing in Kiev in the final, I wanted Mignolet to play. I said, <laughs> I don't trust that Carius. I never trusted him. I was at the game, uh, the, the Roma game, and it was nil nil. I remember it being raining. Uh, I forget who it is. One of the, uh, you know, the one of the Roma lads laughed at it. And Carius went like, and it went through his hands and hit the bar. It hit the bar, and the bar shook like that, and all the, the rain came up. And I went. That just, European Cup final, that uh, European Cup final, that was the worst. Uh, I mean, his life changed forever after that game. I mean, it was so bad. You know, it, it wasn't even a mistake. I mean, my, my wife could have saved that shot. It was yeah, yeah. You know what it was, there, brother? At that time, go on, Frank. Sorry. I remember uh, a, a friend of mine, you know, he's a, he's a playwright, Dave Kirby. And uh, he was talking to that carrier, and he said, I, I was crying. You know, at the end of the game, he said, you were crying? He said, I was looking at kids crying, mate. Never mind. Mate. And I, I think that put everything within in perspective. And Klopp mm -hmm. tried to, uh, you know, uh, I, I remember that, that I think it was, uh, he played Tramia in uh, pre-season and he put him in goal and he made dreadful mistakes even then. Yeah. And that was the end of him. That was the end of him. But yeah. Klopp, you know, he, he tried to force his influence on him, but he just was not good enough. So I agree with you there, Herbert Lum's brother. Yeah, it was a tragedy, yeah. for the lad. tragedy for him. You know what it was as well at the same time? He was involved with a girl and he was really good for him, you know? And I think that sort of influenced his career because exactly at that time he moved to us, he was with that girl and stuff. And uh, boom, that Madrid game showed me <laughs> what his relationship off the field was like with her, you know. So people don't really know about that, but that was the way it was, yeah. Well, let me go through some of these lads. Uh, I think they're very important. Okay. Right. KG says... Uh, I agree with we, you know, with me. Like, uh, I agree. We'll sell. We, we will sell fringe. LFC has the money. Still haven't deployed the hundred million for Casido. <laughs> I don't right. think I ever intended spending it. To be honest. Well, exactly. And Norman says I'm more impressed with Quanza than Colwell. Anyway, yes, I agree. Oh, yeah. I agree, and. Uh, as Chris says, there was a joke about the hundred million for the Chelsea flop, and there was. And uh, Norman, I never believed we had hundred million for Casido yeah. FSG spin. So yeah, something was dodgy about that. You yeah. were never going to spend that on him. No, no. And uh, no. Roman on Kenobi, that uh, CL final broke Carius. It, it broke our hearts. Uh, yeah. Romy, uh, uh, broke our hearts. Oh, I hate talking about it. And Chris says, uh, I agree as it was PR. Of course it was. It was. And uh, I feel for him, uh, but that can't happen twice in one game, says say Sean C. So, yeah. you know, talking about carriers. And it's happened not once but twice <laughs> when he threw it out to Ben Zimmer. Remember? Yeah. Ben Zimmer. Yeah, Ben yeah. Zimmer kicked it straight to him. Yeah. Could have done anything, booted it anywhere. Uh, anywhere at all. Anywhere. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Daniel says, glad we never bought, bought Bellingham. He is one cocky. 
so and so and Sean C says can't lie a part of me was glad he made the mistake against against Tramia as all the tour was we didn't want another keeper I felt guilty but it's true Sean honestly um people were actually saying LFC fans I don't think a, a, a scouts anyway but they were saying I'll give him another season give him another season he destroyed us he destroyed the fan base that day I wouldn't give him a push off the side carriers <laughs> It's one of the biggest pressures in the game, goalkeeper. It's one of the biggest pressures. That's why yeah. I, I admire them so much because you're on the line every game, and especially in them big games, you know, in those yeah. huge games, worldwide audience, all the fan base of Liverpool, and you can do a thing like that, and you, your career is finished, really. It's just so, so difficult. I do feel sorry for the lad, Frank, to be honest, but, you know, I feel a lot sorrier for the fans that were broken hearted as a result of his two terrible mistakes. That level, you know, the money you're earning, you can't do that. Exactly. Exactly. It's all about the concentration levels in that game. His head Absolutely. was all over the place. Yes. There you go. And and that's why yes. he said about him, he wasn't concentrating on his what his profession was. Hence the mistakes he was making. The lad weren't right. So yeah. He had hundred percent concentration every even when the ball's not in your half. Yep. Yep. When Zaro says, uh, roll me one up, I'd swap threads for two maybe. Get on to this oh, one. Yeah. Norman says, roll over chocolate to many great prospects. <laughs> I just don't know where they're coming over all these mad little names. Now, so listen, boys, now it's coming Sunday. We've got uh, Brighton at home. We've got Brighton at home. If everybody's fit, now we know that Canete is playing. We know that he's playing. George, would you would you bring him straight back in to the side alongside? Canete, him? If he comes through, and he comes through tonight on injured. I would, yeah, yeah, I would. I'll bring him back in. Yeah, him and him and Van Dijk in the middle. I think that's our best. That's our best two middle of the back four, and he must be fit if he's playing for his country. Well, okay. What about you, Jay? Uh, I'm just quickly checking how many minutes he's played tonight. Um, so I could just go if he's got 90 minutes in him. So it looks like he's played the 90 minutes. Um, yeah, he'll be ready for Sunday then. So him and Virgil at the back, 100. percent Yeah, that'll do me. That'll do me. Definitely. So it looks like though, doesn't it? Like either Joe Gomez or Shamikas at left back. With Bradley at right back, yes, mm -hmm. so that's what it would be. Yeah, probably, probably Gomez, I would think. Yeah, yeah, but nevertheless, whether it's Samikas or whether it's Gomez, that's a yeah. solid back for solid. what we need. Happy and with it that. looks like our, uh, you know, well, there's I think Enzo's back home, isn't he? Yeah, I think Enzo's yeah. back home, so he'll be there as a DM. And so was McAllister. Uh, McAllister. McAllister, there's your midfield, yeah. There's your midfield. And Curtis Jones coming back to fitness now. I think it's. Uh, I think he's ready for next week along with Jota. Be nice to see him on the bench, you know. Oh, it'd be fantastic to see him on the bench. It really would. We need to try and get a couple of good wins. I want to try and see this goal difference against Arsenal come back, especially against Sheffield United. Might have a chance of banging a few goals in there. Next match. Um, well, Daryl says, uh, no, he doesn't. Norman says, we have a poor record at all with Sir Brighton. It must change. I think you're right. And Daryl says, uh, I'd rather have Frank in goal than Carrius. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not wrong. <laughs> Uh, look at that, keep it there's with us. Uh, Frank, George and JK. Oh, cheers. Nice, cheers, uh, keepers. <laughs> cheers, mate. And, uh, just as everyone else is coming back, how typical. That's true, isn't it? 
Yeah. Just, yeah, it really is. And uh, KJ, I respect your opinion, mate, but Klopp's next morning when he asked about Casado deal, agreed, looked at Tony Barrett and looked like he didn't really have a clue. Exactly. Exactly. That's, right. That's yeah, he didn't. He just didn't. Managers don't really talk about players. Have you noticed? Like in the old days where they would mention a player, yeah, like, I like the look of him. We might be interested in him. Like nowadays, they don't mention nothing about no player. So that Bellingham well, thing, Klopp never ever mentioned Bellingham. Well, guys, uh, uh, I've got to uh, answer this. Is Robo injured? Says so keep it real. Yeah, he's injured. I've got to think. Now he he, he says uh, keep it real. Who's your preferred midfield three to everyone on the panel? So mm -hmm. I'll start with you, JK. Who's your preferred uh, midfield three? Well, for Sunday I'm going to so He scored again today, uh, so he's got two and two. He starts Endo because he's already back home. He starts and McAllister. He's playing tomorrow morning at three o'clock or something. So he should be back by Friday, maybe. And then he's got until Sunday to sort of recuperate. So I'm going Endo, McAllister, and Sabotzai. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'll go the same. It's got to be the same. But the last time McAllister came back from South America, that's where he is. He was very tired on the match. I'm not sure which one it was, but it did take something out of him. So I hope yeah, it's good, actually. he takes some action to alleviate that this time, you know. But yeah, that would be my three. I like Curtis Jones as well when he's fit. But I mean, again, you got if he's on the bench, if not this week, then maybe against Sheffield United. Well, that's Atlanta. Charles says there, George. Jones is back Sunday. Uh, well, I'd have him on definitely on the bench. I'd have him on the bench ready to come on. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe and Sheffield United, yeah. And when uh, I was just saying, I was going No, go on. Say it. No, I was just saying, like the guys who were going to come back in from injury, we've got Brighton, this is sort of okay game. Then we've got Sheffield United, and I think in the Sheffield United game, you could give Jones and a few others more time as well. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, Daryl says, um, no, one gone a minute. Just let me put this up. Armstrong, Jazz Reynolds, he must be uh, updated now. Must be up updated. It came through as a hamstring, hamstring. Know, didn't it? And uh, Daryl says Jota Trent back for the Sheffield United game, which is good news. Oh, that's right. I think it was because Klopp was an intricacy, or maybe we'll read about the truth in the future. And um that's a good point, though. Sean C says, I'd say, I'd say, Maka in six at all, Enzo away, then Jones in six. You know, you, you, oh, oh, isn't that lovely? JSY talks football. Subbed, good luck with your channel. Isn't that lovely? It's nice, isn't it? It's lovely. Mm -hmm. Who's JSY? Don't know. Nice badge, though. Nice badge. You can't see the cracker badge, yeah. It's a cracker. Thank <clears> you, JSY. <throat> Thank you so much. Lovely. That is lovely. Thank you. Must have, must have, you must have like carriers. Poor <laughs> 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 carriers. Well, KG says, is it too soon for Trent to be on the bench for Bright, George? He must be getting close now. I mean, it didn't seem too serious an injury when he first went off. It's been a number of weeks now. You'd think he would be getting close to full fitness. I mean, if, if he's training with the team, then hopefully he should be on the bench at least in one of the next few games. We've got a European yeah. tie coming up soon as well, haven't we? Ah, not it's lovely. Isn't that lovely? And um, well, 
Darrell says the best three were all fit Jones, McAllister, Enzo. Jones. And Chris well, I, wouldn't says, dispute that. I wouldn't dispute if Jones is at his best, he's brilliant. Well, our Montenegro friends, he says, uh, if Curtis is fit, I will play Maka, Dom, and Curtis with Mo. Yeah, well, obviously, uh, Diaz and Darwin up front. See, we've got choices now, haven't we? Well, yeah, JK said it's a team game, it's a squad game. You know, it's no longer 11 players. Yeah. Oh, that's JS Weiss. He's thanks so much always, like the smaller clubs, uh, smaller channels. That's lovely. Thank you. <coughs> and uh, he says, I have my own channel too. It's always nice to have a community. Yeah. Can he send us any uh, details about his channel? Is there any way that he can uh, send that? Because I think that's lovely what it, that lad's done. Or it might, might, look might. It. Yeah. Nice. Might be a I don't know. And then um, Keep It Real says, when everyone is fit, my midfield today, I would like to see Enzo in the number six, Mac and Jones in the eight. See, yeah, it's, it's, still powerful. Powerful. it's still powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Still yeah. powerful. And Bunker says, uh, so Bosley scored a game for Hungary. Yeah, he's coming on a better game now at the moment. He's starting to pick it up. Is, again. No, I, I was just going to ask you there. I was just going to ask the, 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 the panel there, well, you and uh, JK. I was going to say, um, you know, the last few games... And I mean the last few games that Sabozlai's been in, he's coming back to his best. Yeah. Do you I, agree? I think, yeah, I think he is. I think he's coming back. He went through a sticky spell, coming back to his best. I mean, I, I don't think we should get too disappointed in a way about the United game in the Cup because I thought we played really well. We played them off the pitch in the second half. with super. It was just, we just didn't take the chances and two little bad mistakes, one by Nunes, one by Harvey. And we lost the game, but we still played great. So I think we're on the up still. And I think if we can get past these next two home games, we're really up for it then. We can concentrate on the United game away, the yeah. game at Fulham and the game at Everton, especially. Yeah. And we're on the way. Yeah, that'll do me. In the Premier League. Well, just get straight to drunk. He says, uh, so Bosley can, can definitely run and he can run. You can run and uh, keep it. If you make any mods, Frank, we could share his channel link. That's good. Do you know anything about that, JK? You know, like sharing channel links and things. Is he dead? Can't hear him. He's dead again, Frank. Oh, keep it real, says. If you make any mods. Frank, we could share his channel link. And have we shared it? Yep, we shared it. Oh, okay. It's there, uh, keep it real. We'll share his uh, little channel like ours. I've made up with that. I think that's lovely, that. Yeah, it's, it is good. When you I love it, yeah. yeah. We're all fans, aren't we? Yeah, absolutely. And as he said about smaller channels, and uh, suppose I used to play on the wings for both RB clubs, says Keeper. Yeah. Dropped you a sub, lad, says Keeper. There, yeah, that's all. That's and Grunk says, I don't like thinking about that United loss, bro. I don't think anyone does. I don't think anyone does. Oh, Keeper, there, yeah, sub them. Oh, that's lovely. And there he is, look, the match must be over, look, there he is. I'm feeling good. He's making a, do you know what I mean? He, he's sneaking in now. Sneaking you in know, the back door as usual, the, just as I'm going yeah, on. Gifts, you know, the gifts coming out, saying, oh, you know, if I, if I show all these pints and all these scotches, you know, for George. Yeah. Be, I'll get in, easy. Sneaking in. <laughs> Do you know what, George? You're going to love this, right? 
and I'm digressing from football. Uh, a mate of mine, Shama, Shama Campbell, oh, he's no longer with us, he dies when he was very young. Anyway, we were all outside the Gormans in Fraser Street. And uh, we, we were trying to bunk in, you know, we, we were in our teens, you know, late teens, we were in our late teens. And Shama, sh the money you know, to get in, no one else, I was scared, the other couple of mates were scared. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Shama went like that. Tell you what, lads, <laughs> I'll go in, get the ticket, you know, I'll go in, but I'll come back out, I'll, I'll just sneak back out, you know, make sure that the doorman recognises me, and uh, I'll give you one of the tickets. So we did that three times, right, and we all got in. So anyway, <laughs> anyway. One of the lads, you know, one of my mates, he was sitting there, he, he, he had his ticket, he, he had Shammer's ticket, and Shammer went, I'm going to laugh. All oh, right, so he goes, out, goes to the toilet, he's coming back in, and the Zorba went, up, where, where are you going? You've been coming in and out, you're bunking, I threw him out. <laughs> he gave me tickets. <laughs> Go on now, I'll call the police. So, oh, it was so funny. You never do that today, would you? You can never do that today. It's all no, internet, it's just, digital. No, absolutely. Anyway, you don't get never, tickets for anything now, do you? <laughs> anyway, he's an uh, Evasorian. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. And uh, Daryl says, JK, when it's April Phil's Day, April Phil's Day, Next week, can we finally see your beautiful? Oh, shut up, Daniel. See your beauty. I'll oh, look at that, Daz. Um, subbed. Oh, isn't that lovely? Uh, and you know, so he, he's subbed. And uh, look, look, he's, look, he's just sneaked in there. Look, came just yeah. dropping in to say hi, lads. You never walk away. He must have been watching the England game. Yeah, you must have watching the England game. He'll have all the stats, all the stats, all yeah, over all there. The stats, yeah, all the stats. Brilliant. Well, it's really nice. It's really nice that um, I'm made up with that. I can't get over that fella. Yeah, I really can't. And uh, Jake, you know, I'm feeling raw. Says uh, you never walk alone. Nice new badge. That is cracking, that isn't it? Hey, Jake, you left. Yeah, Gary, you'll have to teach me how to do that, how to put a screensaver on. So if I go I for a cup that. of tea, I can just put a <laughs> screensaver on. Yeah, I can do that for you, no problem. Can you? You have yeah, to yeah. create one. You have to create one for me then, one of these days. Yeah, no problem, bro. You can just tell me what yeah. you want on there. I can do it for you. All right, mate. I'll send you something. Can you send Kay Mac a, a link? See if yeah, he wants no to come on and talk about England. Because he said, someone said, okay, Mac, you know. And he fell asleep, he said. There it goes. And he sees what's happening. That's if he come on, like, you know, he might be uh, still asleep. But he never fell asleep. But, oh, look at that. JSY talks football. Thanks, you guys so much thanks guys so much yeah no problem no problem and uh us scousers don't give a fuck oh, see yeah. i i just read the mouse and i just <laughs> stop saying things like that about the game. Game. i don't play every game bleep George. <laughs> <laughs> don't give a bleep about England. Uh, exactly. And we don't. We don't. I don't. I don't. I know you don't, George. Never watch him. Unless I play in Scotland. <laughs> and Norman says, uh, I hope England gets stuffed every game. <laughs> yeah. It's just nuts. And smash the like says JSY talks football. Thank you, JS. Thank you so much. But
but no, we don't support England. I don't support England. I was on some, I'm not no mentioning no names, and I was on today, and uh, he went live, so I was looking at it. And these fellas, like Liverpool supporters, uh, were saying, oh, you know, uh, uh, about Gareth Southgate, and uh, do you think England, who, who do you think would be England's new manager? Of? So they were all bloody England supporters. And I was going to say, is there any scousers on here? Because we don't support England. This is a Liverpool channel. Because <laughs> I don't want to stand, George, next to a, 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 a person who comes to Anfield and even his own grand calls me a murderer, calls me to go back to me Liverpool slum, calls me a bin zipper, calls me a murderer, everything else, and in your Liverpool and all this, sign on. I don't want to be standing next to Pratt's like that, waving a Union Jack. Brainless clowns. I fought 30 odd years against these people. Yeah. Very horrible. Yeah. They are so boy, I just seen that there. How can you support Foden, Walker, Chilwell, Kane, etc.? I can't stand them. Absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> The Anfield Raw says, it's lovely to see George again. I assume you discussed Sven weekend, but seeing as though you're a pair of cynics. Are oh, they? They're not cynics. So yeah. and so, as I dare not ask. No, we have I, I thought that was lovely at the weekend. It was a fantastic gesture by the club. It was really an emotional day. And I thought the game was quite good as well. Some good football played. Full house, lots of money for charity. You know, and I think there's not many other clubs could do that. And City can't fill the ground for a league match. I mean, there's yeah. Liverpool got the stadium full for a charity game. I just thought it was nice. I don't go to these Legends games because I think the tickets should go to people that have been there for the first time or kids or their parents. And Brilliant. Good day They're my sentiments as well. They're, they are my sentiments as yeah. well. Yeah. Absolutely. I've done things, you know, for charity. It's like uh, I gave a talk on the 1st of March about Jack the Ripper. And uh, and it was for prostate cancer. So anyway, the fella came up and, you know, he's applauded and everyone was, and everything was great. And uh, he came up to me and he went, yeah, there's your envelope. You know what did? I said, no. I said, put that in the phone book. I don't yeah. want to put that in the phone. This is for a very good cause. Because I know some lads. I said, Jake Abram, my mate, he died from that just a couple of months ago. A dear friend of mine. And he looked at me, you know, I said, no, honestly, put it in the phone. And they were made up. They were made up that, you know, I just... I, I try to put things back. It's like when I was talking about the lads that are there, you know, like to Tommy Smith, the likes of Chris Lawler, St. John, yeah, yeah. Willie Stevenson. You know, we did all that for those those lads. Yeah. And uh, we took nothing. We took nothing. We just gave every, everything to them, what we made. When I, uh, when, I do my, when I do my talks, my Shantley stories, I do them for charity. I okay. mean, I've I made... Twenty thousand pound in the last seven years, and I could have done it all for myself. Really, I mean, edgy, and, and you know, entertaining people, funny stories, good laughs. But I decided in the beginning it was all going to go to lymphoma research, blood cancer, because my wife suffered from that, and uh, she recovered thanks to the skill of the doctor. So I thought, well, I'll put something back, and it's been a big thrill to do that, you know. And it's far more satisfying to put something back and to keep taking it out. That's lovely, that George. Well, what you've just said there, <coughs> that's lovely. And um, as Sean C says, exactly, Frank. Actually, I like uh, a likable bunch of players, in my opinion. But the, the culture of the average England fan is disgraceful. Yes, yes. Now, yeah, look, look at this. Look, here's the fella who sneaked in. There's no more pint still for us, is there? Or any uh, scotches? Question for Waldorf and stuff. Which is which? <laughs> exactly. 
what is the best result for us? I was going to ask this actually. For us, for City versus Arsenal game, and I'm going to share, I won't put you on the spot, George. I'll wait for the NTK to get an answer to that. That's the best. Okay, for me, the perfect Sunday would be us getting three points and then guys actually drawing. I think a draw right there is sort of... people. Okay, because Arsenal are sort of top on goal difference, no one's sort of really worried about Man City. Man City are a point away. And you know what them guys are like? They're machines, you know. Arsenal, we don't really know what they're all about. Uh, they're in a rich bit, uh, vein of form at the moment. But for me, a point each there and us getting three... Is a perfect Sunday afternoon. Yeah. I think, well, I've got to agree. I think it's got to be a draw, really, I suppose, because that then puts us in the diving seat. Because if we get three points against Brighton and they draw, we're gaining two points on both of them. We win all our matches, we win the league. So I think that's right, isn't it? It's as simple as that. Yeah. It's as simple as that. If we don't get cheated, because we can win every game. <laughs> Yeah. We can win every game. Especially with those three that are on VAR and uh, referee and Tony Coot and the other guy. Exactly. 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 Um, well, I, 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 I want to draw. I want to draw, to be honest. Which but, one would you rather... Which is the best one of them to win, then? If okay, one of them has the best, to win. Okay, the best one to win. This is... See, don't forget that they've got to play, uh, you know, besides playing each other at the weekend, they've also got to play Spurs. Yeah. Away. And Spurs, you know, they're fighting for fourth. And they're not a bad size. We've got to play them. But we're playing them at Anfield. As I said, we're, we're, we're liable to beat it all. You know, we can beat anybody. We can beat anybody. Yeah. Now, go on. I think I think if of the two, I'd rather Arsenal beat them because I, I think there's more chance of Arsenal losing a game between now and the end of the season than City. Yeah, City, absolutely. City absolutely. are a bit of a roller coaster, aren't they? You, you can t- they, they tend to win, but Arsenal, you know, maybe could could drop points. So if anybody was going to win, I would, me personally, I would say Arsenal. But I want to yeah. draw. Yeah, yeah. Who would you rather see lose? You know, if one of them has to lose. Okay. Mm, that's a tricky one. Um, I want to say Arsenal. Yeah. Only because they're on top of us at this moment. Yeah. And Man City are a point behind us. So I don't really want Arsenal to win because of also the buzz that we'll get from that going into the next games. Look, we did it at Man City away. We can do it any, we can point, take on any actually. team. Okay. And they're on a run right now, Frank. Um, they're scoring big goals as well 5 0, 6 0. 6-1, actually. Um, so, for me, Arsenal losing would be a better thing for us, guys. Yeah. No, I think you're right there because it could kick them in the teeth, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Because if we go clear of them, and don't forget, we've got a, an own game again against Sheffield yeah. United. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't like talking about, uh, you know, kicking, you know. Yeah. What I mean they could become like the, the kicking team to uh, get more points and everything else, if you know what I mean. Yeah, because Arsenal gave them seven. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's where the goal difference is. Yeah. But I, I, I'd like to see, uh, I'd like to see them lose, that is, uh, Arsenal, because I think that could like dent their little that, you know, they're a little confidence a little, if you know mm-hmm. what I mean. And don't forget that they've still got to play in the derby game against Spurs. So that's the yeah. way I look at it. And, and they've got Chelsea when, as well, last game of the season. Exactly, yeah. <coughs> you are just yeah. saying there, there, k about, uh, good evening, by the way. Evening, k Evening, sorry guys, I'm asleep on the sofa. Watching X Files with the wife. <laughs> Both passed out. <laughs> it's a birthday over now, is it? Yeah. Celebrations. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, we were just asking there, uh, what score would you like it to be at the weekend, uh, the Arsenal versus uh, City game? Um, Favourable. 10-1. Ten, 10-1. Ten, 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 ten. 
10 all, I'll watch it. <laughs> um, it can't go to extra time, can it, unfortunately? <laughs> um, I don't know, like a like a like a really hard fought nil nil with with like two red cards and a couple of injuries, please. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of injuries, yeah, a couple of red cards, yeah, yeah thrown into the mix. That would be all right. Be fantastic, be all right. wouldn't it? Especially, um, especially, uh, oh, who's the who's the guy in the centre for both both the DMs will do me actually. Both both red cards for both the DMs. Rodri, Rice yeah. and um, uh, Rice and oh god, what's his name? I Rodri. Forget his name. Rodri, yeah, Rice and Rodri, please. <laughs> You want to talk better with that? <laughs> I agree with that comment. I think Arsenal will drop more points in City and they've got a better goal difference than us. So it'd be nice if City, if they did, yeah. if one had to win, I said, if City beat them, take some of that goals back. Because yeah. we'll, win, we'll win against Brighton, I'm sure. Well, what, what I said about Arsenal, um, I said this on, um, on Jamie Phillips' show a um, couple of days ago, is Arsenal have been, Arsenal have been unbelievable and they've been on a nine-game winning streak to get where they are. And that's only to get where they are, which is topped by one point. Yeah? Yeah, exactly. They can't win another nine games. They've never done it. in their t They've never done it in history. Like, they've never gone on a 19-game winning <laughs> streak. But that's what they have to do to win the league because that's, yeah. how, that's how competitive it is against... Man City and us. We've been there and done it. And we've also had our blip. Like, Man City have also had their blip. Arsenal haven't had a blip yet. <laughs> yeah, no. and, this is, and this is the business end of the season. And the they've been playing, year, like... They? And they've been playing really, really hard for games. And for some yeah. reason, they've been, like, playing all of their players consistently... For 90 minutes, even if they're winning like 3 0, 4 0 for some reason. And Saka's when injured, Man isn't he? Saka's yeah, we're injured. like Man City and us. We're like rotating and taking players out of the game and resting players and, you know, yeah. having players injured, you know, whatever. Like they've had like a pretty much starting eight for the whole season. Yeah. So it's time for them to feel what we've felt, as in injuries and fatigue and. And games where you've got to win constantly. Like you've got to win. Like, yeah. Um, yeah so I, I think they'll drop off. I think they'll finish third. Like, they I did last year. Third. They dropped off last year, K-Mark. They dropped off yeah. last year, didn't they? Yeah. They couldn't Man stand City it. Will, Man City will beat them. They just will. Like, I think so. I think what so. what they do. <laughs> I think so. That mightn't be a bad result for us as well. I mean, even if they give them 3-0 or something, take some of the goals back. If we could win 3 0 against Brighton and they lose 3 0, we're back level with them on goal difference again, personally. We're still ahead of City on goal difference. If we the, beat the, thing, the thing that worries me now is is I don't I, I think the biggest thing against us now is is the Premier League itself, is the officials and the actual games. Oh, we've talked because, about that tonight, I'll tell you. Because oh. Jesus Christ, like for us to get that many away games in such a short amount of time and you know have you seen have you seen the referee and the var we've got at the weekend yeah we were just talking about it you literally, you could, about I think you literally could not pick the worst people for officiating and we just seem to get them consistently let's just, let's just let's just put a bunch of dickheads in charge every single game for liverpool like i honestly i think how could they? How could they put? How could they put Tony on VR when he's the guy that didn't give that penalty to Doku and McAllister? That's unbelievable. That you know, really beyond he's belief. Also, he's, he's also the guy that didn't give the um, the basketball against Ar against Arsenal. Yeah. He's the referee we got. So we got the ref who didn't give the basketball, <laughs> and the VAR guy who didn't give the penalty. Kicking the chest. Like, can you can you literally get two two more controversial decisions all season? Oh. <laughs> Let's wait and see what happens. Wow. Well, as yeah. uh, Keith McVale says, um, April is going to be a tough month for us yeah. to win away games on the spin. Ever, ever, and Man, ever and a Man United away are just two of the worst games. They just are. Like, yeah. 
Even Fulham, so, even Fulham's not an easy one. Fulham, Fulham no. in, in the middle is horrible. <laughs> we can do it. Uh, but we can do it. We can do yeah. it. I, I've got confidence. I really have. She came back. I was saying, you know what did a man you get a defeat? I think when the lads, the lads were fuming. Klopp was fuming. And the lads knew that they should have won that game, hands down. They knew they should have won it. And I don't think playing Man United at uh, Old Trafford won't be the same as uh, when they beat us in the Cup. It will be far different from when uh, they, they beat us. And yeah. we'll go at them. And we will beat them. Everton, on the other hand, is uh, that's the real stinker that's for me. Derby. It yeah. really is. Because they, you know... They're struggling as usual, and they'll be up for beating us because you know what they're like. But again, I think that we could still beat them. We fear nobody. We really don't fear, and especially with our players all fit, because by the time we play them, and it's at the end of the season anyway, so it could all be over. Yeah, it could the be league over. table doesn't lie, does it? The league table doesn't lie. We're there for yeah. a reason. We're up there yeah. for a reason. Yeah, we're a better absolutely. team than Man United, and we're a better team than Everton, so we should take yeah. that. But that uh, is I'm, the real, you know, if we're still like fighting it out with Man City or whoever, yeah. even uh, Arsenal or the two of them. Uh, I, I, I think I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's interesting as well, and um, I'll mention this because it actually happened when we had those two games where we battered Man United and we battered Arsenal at home, and we didn't get results. Yeah, we did get angry, and we destroyed Chelsea, and we destroyed yeah. Newcastle, and then we yeah. went on this mad winning run with half yeah. the team missing, by the way, and no Salah. Yeah. So, Absolutely. so we've been there and done it. We've already felt the pain. Yeah. And we've just felt that at, at Man United. So, that's now for Klopp to get the players in and go. We we know what this feels like. Like we we did like this happened just before Christmas. We didn't get the we didn't get the results that we that we deserved. So let's go and win the league now. Yeah. And let's go and yeah. let's go and win let's go and win the Europa League. Yeah. I, I, and I think the guys are back. Jota coming back's huge as well. If we get Jota, Jota back, coming huge. back is seriously I, I I don't I don't think people underestimate how, how big a bigger player he is gonna be for the running. Yeah. And also Trent, by the way. Yeah. Trent's a game changer. He just is, right? Even if even if we can come even if he comes off the bench for for a couple of games, you know, just to warm him up, he's a he's a game changer. Yeah. Creates. He's, he, there's only one player in the team that's created more than him this season, and that's Mo Salah. Big chances yeah, wise. Seen that before. Yeah. 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 And, and Mo Salah would be Mo Salah would probably have double the assists if Darwin Nunes put the chances that he created away. But yeah. <laughs> but it just it is yeah. what it is. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. and we'll be talking about Mo Salah on like twenty assists, <laughs> which is mad. Which it's is mad. mad. It's mad. Well, keep it real, so he's probably going to witness some corruption in the City Arsenal game. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice to see City get a bad decision because I've not seen them get one yet. I've yeah. never seen City get yeah. a bad decision, by the way. No, no. And that's where, you know, people keep saying uh, about being robbed. It's not robbed. You know, I, I go along with, well, I've always said, we're cheated. Not yeah. robbed, you know, because cheated epitomises what's going on in football today. And that's what worries me, the cheating of it. Shocking. Well, have, have, you, you, have, you talked about, have you talked about the airline company going... Going public, Man City's it... airline company going public, Emirates airline. So they go oh. public on the stock exchange this year. If they go public on the stock exchange this year, then Man City can't hide because their pub their public records will be available, and you'll be able to see how much they did pay Man City because they have to announce that if they go public. Because the whole the whole the biggest scam is that one because they were supposed to have got 80 million off them but yeah. but the papers only say the the papers that got released in in germany by the whistleblower 
say that they only got seven million. That's just one. That's just one company. But that's like nearly nearly seventy million, like wow. fudging fudging accounts wise. Just cheated, they just cheated their way to the tax. I mean, if you look at that alone, shocking. That's more than Nottingham Forest and Everton together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Like how much they fudged their well, they didn't fudge theirs. They actually came clean, didn't they? And that's why they've got points deduction. Well, they can't. They can't hide forever, can they? They're going to get done sooner or no. later. They have to. They have to. Yeah. You can't hide forever. Well, okay. Scandal right. follows. Scandals follow. Pep. <laughs> that's just a fact. Yeah. Well, well every really place he's so... been, there's been there's been scandal. Every place he's been. Let's well, say the uh, you know, something does happen, and they say we've got to punish you. What kind of punishment would we get? I think it's, I, I think it's relegation to the. Depends whether they find guilty of, doesn't it? Depends whether they, if they find them guilty of all 115 charges, they'll be playing in the conference. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's a minimum of two leagues. By the way. Yeah, the Rangers went right down, didn't they? Rangers went right down to the. Yeah, he did. In Scottish football. He did. So did you, mate. That's right. You did. Yeah, so must so be two divisions. At least. I know. mean, I mean, if I'm if I'm honest, this is if they're found guilty, this is over ten years of cheating. I think the club should be put out of business. I think it's tainted I'm the legacy sorry. already. Anyway, it's tainted all the all the titles they've won. It's in the background. It's swimming in the way all the time. I mean, it must be. I would be disgusted if it was our club. Like, there's an element of there's an element of like they should they should definitely kick the owners out, so they they should get they should get banned out of the country, and then the club 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 should be put into administration. Just like, money, you could money, support money. them anyway. <laughs> like, seriously, you've got about fifty fans. <laughs> they can't sell out their own ground. Like, is anyone really going to miss them? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think anyone, anyone, they'll, they'll maybe just a, just appear like they did winning and then just disappear. And there you go, a flash in the pan. Yeah, well, yeah, there's I mean, a couple Pep, of questions I mean, for Pep, you. Pep, for Pep, Pep got banned himself for cheating, like he took drugs. <laughs> like, when he was at Barcelona, it's like, well, it's not like the guy's holier than how. <laughs> there's a couple of uh. Questions for you. Well, not questions, you know, a couple of comments, two of them. Like to answer the both of them. I'll start with uh, JK, then George, then into it, you came uh, you don't mind. It's, uh, let me talk, let me say the two comments first. Arsenal will drop points away to Spurs. That's one. The other one is off Anfield Raw. Question for the panel, do we basically need to go undefeated until the end of the season to win? No more slip-ups. So, so don't forget, uh, keep it real when he says Arsenal will drop points away to Spurs and the Anfield Raw with that one. Uh, JK. The way... The title race is going. Arsenal's sort of a it's like a spring chicken sort of energy in the last few months, you know. So, goal difference sort of makes a difference. It's better to have a better goal difference than the rest of the guys, you know. Um, I think we've got two home games now where we can do that. We can do something about that. Get the points first thing, and after that, see how many goals we can get with that. Um, I feel if the Man United game was a slip up, we were going to have. It was okay to have it in the FA Cup. I'd rather lose in the FA Cup than lose to them in the league. Um, so, just we just got to win every game. Win every game and I think we should be okay. The good thing about Sunday is, is that those two guys are meeting each other. Um, that's like one good thing that's coming from these fixtures now. Um, so, that game on Sunday for us is sort of a nice little... I wouldn't say like a little breather, but it was just one team can drop points. So, so it's all good. Okay. Well, okay. And, uh, yeah. you know, the Anfield Royal answer that one. You know, yes. so you basically need to go undefeated until the end of the season, JK. 
Yeah, I would say, yeah. That was a long yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to think about it quickly. I was just like, mm. yep. We've got to win everything. If we want to win, we've got to win everything. So next two home games, 100%, we've got to win them and take it from there. But as the Alfredo Dorsey says, undefeated. You know, we never mentioned win every game. All right. George, what did you say to those two uh, colleagues? I think if, you, if you want to win the Premier League, I think we have to win every game. If we want to win it, for sure. For sure. I think we will win every game at Anfield. I think we'll win all our home games. We've been doing that for a long time. The away games are going to be the key, really. Um, I'm not saying we can't afford to throw one game. But I think we can't do much more than that because City are going to be there chipping away every game. Um, Spurs is a tough game for them, tough game for Arsenal, yeah. But I just think we've got the capability to win every game. We've certainly got the capability to win all our home games, which is a big strength. Um, the away games, the big ones, I think, are Fulham, United and Everton. Definitely. I mean, uh, I think we can beat United because we're a better team than them. We proved that in the Cup, even though we lost. Um, Everton were definitely a better team than them but it'll be a lot of passion on the pitch so it depends which way it goes but yeah I think we're I think we're every chance Frank and I think we do need to go forward now probably winning every game but certainly well, not I, dropping maybe one one draw well I think uh, you know what you said there I think we're a better team than the lot of them to be honest I really do I really believe that because we proved it against City didn't we in the second half we, of course we did we proved it against everybody. Look at Newcastle up there, nine, uh, ten men, and yeah. we beat, we beat them. You know, so it, it's things like that coming back and winning games. You know, no matter who the uh, opposition is, and the injury. Said, yeah, and the injuries. Don't forget the injuries sends an officer, everything else, and the snidiness and the cheaters. You know, we were cheated. K Mac, what do you say to those two? Uh, Arsenal will drop points away to Spurs. And uh, do we basically need to go undefeated until the end of the season to win? No more slip ups. I will I will add on to what you said as well about um, beating Newcastle on ten men after another robbery of a red card um, yeah. and coming back to win that. Tottenham away, nine men. And we got beaten by an own goal. An own goal, last second. It should be five <laughs> points clear at the moment. It's pure. That was a that was a robbery and a half. No. <laughs> that was a robbery and a half. That game, two red cards, which weren't red cards, by the way, either of no. them. No. No. Yeah. And the goal that was chalked off, that was that was clearly onside, and they knew it. Oh my god, I can't breathe. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so. I, I actually, I'll go one. I'll go one up on that one. Um, I think Arsenal and City will drop points against Chelsea. They've got Chelsea. That'd be good. Yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea are not an easy team to play. Is that Stamford Bridge? Is that Stamford Bridge? It's so game? unpredictable. Yeah, they're so unpredictable. Um, luckily, we've got we've got um, we we've, we've got them out of the way. So that's one. Um, I think I think we can draw a game because. All we've got to do is really match them points for points, game games for game, really. Um I do think I do think they'll probably drop points. They've got to play each other, so there's a possibility they could drop two points each there. There's a very high possibility they can do that. And they might just they might just do that. If the game goes into like, you know, the last like twenty minutes and, and it's a like a nil nil or a one all, no one's gonna try and win that. They just won't. Like it, it's, it'd be better that they get a draw than lose, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. I think a banana skin for us could be Aston Villa away, but it could be done and dusted because it's the second to last game. I think. Um, I think that's going to be the hardest game for us, Aston Villa away, because Aston Villa might be playing for a Champions League spot, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's massive for them. Like that's just so big for yeah. Aston Villa to get into the Champions League. So they could be playing for a Champions League spot. Um, all the others, I think, I think we'll be okay. Like I do. We, we, we've got, we'll have, we'll have 
we'll have Trent back, we'll have Curtis Jones back, we'll have Stefan Batetis back in the, in the fold. Um, so he'll be available if we need to play him. Um, we've got Salah fully fully rested now. Um, we've got Dominic Sabolsai, who's just bragging goals in for fun now. So he, he looks like he's back to, to the kind of form he had at the start of the season. We'll have Jota back on the trail. Um, just to be able to like bring players off the bench. Like we will win the league this season off our bench. Yeah, and it will be amazing. It will be amazing. We'll have more assists and more goals than any other players in any of the five leagues off the bench this season to win the league. It, that's what will happen. And hopefully we'll have three in the bag as well. Two cups. Yeah. I like that. Frank, I'm going to have to go now because my battery is going my battery is going flat. I've got two minutes left on the battery. I forgot to plug it in. And it's warning oh, me here. So George, I'll thank you. Thank take you. a leave of you now. But that yeah, good George. news from K-Mac. Leave on a high note. We're going to win the Premier League. Get to see you, K-Mac. See you next week, Frank. See you, see you next week. Right. I'll, send you that. I'll send you that thing through for the uh, screensaver. Okay, no oh, problem, bro. Yeah, yeah, that's great, that. That's okay, cheers, guys. Take care. Right, thanks a lot, See you next week. Have a good Easter. Okay. Bye. And you. Cheers, Have a good mate. one, George. Isn't he lovely? What do you think of that? Uh, Redbirds, what he says there, K Mac and uh, JK. Got to give the Gooners some credit to have got where they are still. And with K Mac, red cards and a few injuries for both <laughs> 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 I hope so. I mean, just get Rod, just get Rodri and Rice sent off, please. A couple of games with them out, and they'll see how hard it is. Like we've gone, we've gone like four or five first team players out. None of them have gone more than like one. You know what I mean? I know John Stones is is injured, isn't he? So uh, uh, mm -hmm. that's one down. Um, Saka and Martinelli are probably out, aren't they? Yeah. So that's yeah. that's a couple down, but. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the guys in the middle. They've never been missing any of the guys in the middle. That's where you really struggle when you can't win your battles in the middle. Like, we've been decimated all season. <laughs> like, well, like, like we, didn't, you know, we didn't have Salah. We didn't have Salah for like two and a half months. We had just one I said before. I said that came on. I said people forget that we haven't had motions like more or less uh, the first of. And he's only played a couple of games, hasn't he's he? Still like, I think he's still like only one goal behind Haaland and top assists. Yeah. <laughs> he's been yeah. missing like he's been yeah. missing nearly half a season. Well that's just <laughs> it. It came up, I, I said I was watching some pod and people were saying uh, well, yeah, get rid of him, get get rid of uh, Salah and uh, we'll do this and we'll do that. I I, I had to turn them off. Because we've all been, not by the way, we've also team. we've also been missing Ali. <laughs> we've exactly. been missing our first choice goalkeeper after half a season the as well. Goalkeeper in the world, the best <laughs> goalkeeper in the world. We've been we, we also well. had we also had um, Trent out for the start of the season. We we also had Canate in and out. Like we had Curtis Jones in and out. Like Jesus Christ, we we've had a lot of players. We had Virgil Van Dijk banned for three games. Yeah, like you know, you, yeah. you really have. To, I mean, I think I think we had Klopp missing for three games as well. Three suspensions. <laughs> <laughs> the manager's not even been there for some of them. Honestly, I like, like I, I said this. I said this a while ago. Like, if he wins the league this season, it has to be the greatest his most, one ever. His greatest ever league yeah, win. I agree. I in, agree. Like, I, just the adversity and everything. It's yeah. it's in, it's incredible. Well, the adversity is against VAR. The adversity is against the referee, uh, the ref uh, not referee, referee, the referees. The referees adversity now. is against <laughs> cheating, cheating. Mad. And you know, so it, it, it's one of those things. It really is. You know anyway, what? Uh, DW's just wrote their law lawfare. And you know what? I, you know what I will say. It does feel a little bit like the Democratic and the Republicans, 
like it does feel like we may be Liverpool are like the the Republicans, and the rest are like the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> they're, literally, <laughs> they're literally rigging the system against us. <laughs> I'm raised up at this comment here, and I've been trying to say this for a long time. I actually think Liverpool will put a statement performance on when big at all trappers in the league says keep it real. I totally agree. What do you think, JK? I think uh, most of us fans were overconfident going into that United FA Cup game. I never met one, like everyone was saying we're going to smash on 5-6-0, you know, some crazy things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, same as a league game at home, 0-0, uh, after we said it's going to be about 5-6-7 and it never happened. So going into that game, I wouldn't go overconfident into that game. Just get the job done, what needs doing, you know. Yeah. I was Robbo injured. Yeah, yeah it came it's off. an hamstring. Yep. Hamstring. Oh god! And as George said, that's uh, that's him out for the rest of the season. Look, it is all the uh, it is all the England fans now, all coming back. You know, after the watching Eng England. Ah, this is Hutchinson. Big old Frank JK came back, George and LFC fans in the chat. Cheers, Richard. The thing, the, the, the thing which annoyed me the most about the um, the Man United away game, it was it was the fact that he played such a strong team in a in a dead rubber on the Thursday. That's the that's the kind of disrespect which I felt that Man Manchester United were given. It was like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, we'll we'll get a few goals in the first half and then we can take all the big hitters off. And that just didn't plan out like that. You know, we had to take them off because they were bloody knackered because of the Thursday. That that annoyed me more than anything else. But, you know, if we're going to lose any game, if we're going to lose one game towards the end of the season, then let it be that because that doesn't matter really. You know, you know we did play a team against Arsenal, which, which were doomed to lose, but they won. <laughs> um. So it was like he was trying anyway. Do you know, what do you think, though? You know, the pair of you, you know, you and uh, JK there. We lost Canate in that game as well, which is really annoying. It is, yeah, of course. But he you, know what was weird? You, know what, you know what was weird as well? And and I want to get your opinion on this, JK, is when 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 we when, when Canate, when Canate was, got injured in that game, and he felt like something. He felt, you know, he felt something, and he was, and he's going to come off. Like that happened before it happened. If that made sense, like he signaled before. Why didn't he just play with ten men? Like we were winning the game eight two. Like just play with ten men. Just take him mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. like, I know you can't bring another sub on. Just remove him. Like you know what I mean. I, I don't know. It was a bit weird. And Salah staying on to the end. Just take him off. No, like, it was a little we, we literally had 10 men. Like, we literally could have just played with 10 men. It, it was 8 2. <laughs> yes. I think Klopp ain't got much wrong this season, subs wise. But that game, for some reason, I don't know what happened to him. He went too strong for me. Um, I, 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 think that, I think that manager got in his head. Because he hated that manager, didn't he? Who? Klopp hated that manager. Oh. oh he, yeah. he said something in his press conference when he played them yeah. away, saying that they were playing to injure us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, I'm, yeah. I, you know what? The biggest thing that pisses me off about the internationals is we are just too nice. And we just don't remove players. Like... Man City Arsenal took loads of players out of the out of yes, the national games. Like, why yes. the hell didn't we just take take Robbo and you know just say, look, oh, they got niggles, like, yeah. they, they feel something. Like, yeah, because they're going to yeah. them, or, or or basically say to the to the international teams, you can only play them for forty five minutes. Like, have stipulations. Like, you can play them in one game. Like Dominic Sabolsa played both games full ninety minutes. Against 
nobody teams for no like there's no reason for him to play like he's the captain of of hungary they, they've already qualified like literally just say he can play 45 minutes in each game that's it give yeah. them some rules like yeah. we are being absolutely done over by being so friggin nice all the time like <laughs> what is your blame for that you know you're saying that we're nice the club, the club. of course it is the club. And I'm the backroom staff. The club. Literally. And we're allowing it. We're allowing like, it. Like, I'm not being funny. Like, the, the first thing I would have said is, Robbo, you are not playing internationals this to the rest of the season. Yeah. Because we lost you for half the season because of yeah. an international. Yeah. And guess what? We've now lost you for the rest of the season because of an international. Yeah. Like, uh, is, is, is Gomez okay, by the way? I don't know. Like, did he? Did yeah, he I think so okay? because I think the lads was a bit. Jesus, I would have said yeah. I Imagine losing Gomez and Robbo. <laughs> Gomez is basically Robbo's replacement now. Yeah. Yeah. I think his Ferguson did it well. He knew when he yeah, had a title he running. He just he was the he just did it right, you know. And I think he, he blocked them, mate. He literally stopped yeah. them from going, and they were pissed off with him. But so what? So what? Like yeah. it's important. It's important that we that we get this this league won as Klopp's last last league. Like he should be, Klopp should literally be be pulling all of his players out of internationals. Yeah. Like what's he got to lose? What's he got to lose? It's his la it's his last year with us. And we've now Van lost Dijk, Van Dijk exactly. and Robertson are captains, so they're going to go to the Euros. You know they've got no worries about their places, so they shouldn't have gone. My opinion. One hundred percent, mate. One hundred percent. Virgil Van Dijk played both games as well. Yep. Well, um, Yusuf says, uh, I don't think the Prem of the balls to relegate them. That's Man City. And yeah. that's the issue. Too precious. Too precious, yeah. Man City. And uh, the drunk says, Klopp and Liverpool are getting no respect. And they don't get any respect. And that's the problem with their uh, football today. And uh, Richard says, uh, Man City owners to be banned from football. Don't think so. I'd love to see it, but I don't think so. If they're found guilty, they, they should be kicked out. Right. They well, won't get uh, out because they, they throw so, so much money in it, don't they? Like, of course. Like, it's like what you said around. before, uh, it came out. Uh, about, you know, if all this comes to fruition and the, 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 they're found guilty, you know, thrown out, banned for everything. And that's sort of exactly what uh, Richard Hutchinson says. Man City need to be banned for, for life, for life, the football. And I think he's, uh, you know, he, he's not just like being blasé about it. I think he's, you know, I'm talking about Richard Hutchinson there. And just like yourself. And that's the way we feel about these cheats. And they are cheats. They can't get away. They knew what they were doing. And I think it was George. Was it, was it George or JK? Not quite. Uh, I don't know whether it was you, JK. When they said that, uh, looking at the, the table of shirts. Oh, it was George. Mm -hmm. Looking at the, you know, we sell more shirts than anybody else with the exception of Real and uh, Barca and yet they weren't in the ten, uh, the top 10 Manchester City they weren't in the top 10 of shirt selling so that just shows you where all this uh, FFP comes into play cheating somewhere along the, the, the oh, I mean I mean we all we all know that um, we all know that Mancini was being paid double wages and one of them was from a shell company like we all know that, like that was off the books. Like we all know about Teddy Sherrington <laughs> launching a company online, like doing an advertisement about this this company which was going to sponsor the club. They didn't even have a have a building. It was a PO box. <laughs> like you went to search for the people that ran the company on LinkedIn. They didn't yeah. exist. Like Teddy the whole thing's a scam. Like the whole thing is just a massive massive scam it's just it's just a way of shoveling money into a club that can buy all the big players and and spend when they want like 
They, well, got the money. they just need Teddy to find got... a way of spending it. <laughs> yeah, but you'd ask how much Teddy got out of it all to do that. Honest, you look. Oh, there's a, a little team there. Great evening to you, Frank, panel, and chat. Hope you're all, all well, of course. It's been murder here. <laughs> Should have joined us before. It's been good. I mean, the, the, thing, the thing that I said about the, the, the charges thing and, and when this comes up is somebody's going to take a massive hit on this and it's either Man City or it's the Premier League because... You can't accuse the royal family of UAE of being corrupt if the, <laughs> if they are or they aren't. Because if they are, then that's a big accusation. And if they're found guilty, then that's huge. Like that is like that's 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 earth shattering like corruption at the at the highest level with a royal family involved. Yeah. But if they're not, what's gonna happen to the Premier League? Because they're not they're not gonna take that line down. Like they're gonna come after the Premier League. They're gonna sue for liability or defamation or whatever. Like you're not you're not just gonna take that line down. It so someone's gonna lose. And someone's it's not the Premier League. Someone's gonna lose big. It definitely won't be them. It definitely won't be them, so they'll just have to go so after whoever it is. You've got to have some. You've got to have some evidence if you're going after people that big. Well, you've got to keep it real. He says, and and this is spot on. This they go around in circles during <laughs> their trophy parades to make it look like they've got lots of supporters, and that's right. Well, Chelsea did oh, the same, didn't they? Chelsea did yeah. the same. They went down the same street four times. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, IBS uh, Stella says I think City have the easiest running so yes we need to win every game and Sean say if Arsenal take points off City we can draw a game that's what he says yeah, that's what I uh, Richard says Liverpool FC no draws and no lo losses LFC need to win every game. That's what he keeps saying. And uh, good evening, Gene says, uh, keep it real. <laughs> Yosef. Yeah, keep it real. Look. I've been watching the England game tonight. Well, uh, who scored the second? I, I know who scored the, I know who scored, like Tony scored the penalty, but who, who scored the second? It was two all. Having a clue, I, I don't even follow England. I oh no! Every time I watch England, I fall asleep. <laughs> Stop! Stop so, so boring. So boring. Oh, only... Bellingham scored. Okay. Can, can anyone? Go can, can, yeah. Go on. Can I just? Can finish? anyone? Can anyone answer the question why Harvey Elliott isn't playing for England? Like. Yeah, because he plays for is, Liverpool. Why is Cobby Manu playing for England ahead of? Harvey Elliott, like, have they even looked at what Elliott's won this season, over the seasons? <laughs> like, like, honestly, I can't get my head around that. I can't get my head around why he's still playing under-21 football. And, and, and he looks like the best player on the park in every under-21 game <laughs> as well. Like, he literally looks like, <laughs> he looks like they've literally thrown a, a, a Premier League footballer on the pitch against like a, a pub pub league team. <laughs> Seriously. Well, Yusuf says City have to go to Spurs away. Spurs are the bogey side. City haven't scored a goal at Spurs' new ground in the league. You know, so there's all little mad things there. There's all little mad things there for... Uh, for us together, oh, I'm an ex. Uh, hello, Frank and friends, just in. I'll watch back later. He's good. Yeah. Well, that's it. Uh, RTW. 
This isn't the history channel, is it? Says he don't know it's football. He loves our history show, you say. Uh, we're on the same. Uh, it's more or less. It's a political thing, you know. We, uh, we share. It's a political thing. But anyway, no, it's not, unfortunately, for you, DW. I'll be seeing you there during the week. That's uh, that's definitely. And uh, Paul Turner says, Goodison is going to be the hardest, in my opinion. And uh, Mark Simons, if Jota comes back, I'm much more confident because other than Mo, we don't have an expert yet. He's right. Would you agree there? Would you agree with that? What he said, that's a very good point, actually. Would it's you a really agree good with point. Him? Yeah, we, we haven't got we haven't got a, a we haven't got a lot of players that have won it like up front apart from Mo and Jota. Like we've got players that have obviously won trophies, but we haven't got players that have, that have got been over the line and won it in the Prem. Um, we still got quite a few though, quite quite a few big players though. We've got Ali, we've got um, we've got Virgil, we've got Trent, we've got Curtis Jones. Um, Elliot, no, El Elliot, Elliot was in the Premier League winning team, wasn't he? But well, he didn't play, did he? No, no, he wasn't no. with us, was he? No, no, it was Jones. Um, and you got Jota, Salah, and Robbo. We've still got a few, still got a few core players, but um, yeah, I think it's important. Jota, I think he's going to be really important. Curtis Jones is going to be important as well because it means we can rotate the midfield. Yeah, we're not bringing we're not bringing like we're not bringing like a Bobby Clark on to in like an important game because one of the one of the midfielders is knackered or a Graven Birch. It means Graven Birch is behind Curtis Jones, which is good. I won't not, care. He's not being to, great. Uh... He's not being great when he's come off the bench, like oh. at all. But I think does, you know. Does Jones start? Does Jones start for you in your in your free in midfield? When he's fit, be honest. Yeah. Be honest. Yeah, when he's fit. I think Jones. I think we've missed Jones. I really do. Uh, my uh, see, we can swap and change our midfield during a game, but we have to have a DM. I don't. I know this sounds mad, like, but I don't like to see McAllister in the number six. I really don't. I know, because he's, when we brought he's, in Andrew, he, he, he just transformed the whole of the midfield, didn't that, he? That's the thing for me. Like, That's the thing for me. Those two have to play every single game and the others yeah. get rotated, but then that's yeah. not fair on them. No. So, it, so it'd, be a case of, it'd be a case of if we're winning a game like 2-0, say, for example... Okay, so say Brighton, yeah, we're winning 2-0. Yeah. If you take Endo off, you have to put McAllister there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or if you take McAllister off, Endo plays 90 minutes. Well, that's what I said. You know what I mean? One of them has to play 90 minutes every game, whether it's Endo or Mac. <laughs> you know what I mean? If one of them gets a rest, the other one plays 90. So that's, that's the problem. So How many games is it left? Is it nine games? I think it's I think it's eight. I think eight. it's eight. 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 And we've still got the Europa, haven't we? I'm gonna I'm gonna count now. Have a look now. What do you think, JK? You know, about uh, the rotation of uh, our midfield? Because we've got the personnel now. Whereas we didn't have it last year. We never had it for a couple of seasons, and be a knowledge. Not just this uh, last season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like for me, if I'm going to pick three midfielders, I'll go with Sabatsai, McAllister, Endo. Um, Jones doesn't start for me, even though he's he sort of improved his game. I've been watching him just before he got injured and stuff. The way he was positioning himself on the field, on the field, playing like a sweeper role. So he's thinking about the team, you know. So it showed me his like maturity and stuff. But I noticed I miss his sort of snappiness in the midfield. You know, the way he sort of jumps into tackles, this, that and the other. And I think we sort of missed that against United. 
I think Sabotsulai, he played okay. Not great, but he played okay. Malakasta was okay. Ende wasn't great, looked tired. So for me, we need Jones back, Graham and Birch. Maybe he can push on as well. So, But for me, I'm starting Endo, Sabotsulai and Malakasta as my first three. Uh, I, I agree. We've got 10 games, by the way. Do you want me to read them out? I hate your show, but yeah. I know. Yeah. So we've we've got um we've got Brighton at home, we've got Sheffield United at home, so we could get the goal difference back in those two games, if I'm honest. And I think Trent could be back for the, uh, Sheffield United. I've heard, um, which will be good. Um, then we've got Man United away, Crystal Palace at home, which is good. It's good that we've got a home game. I thought I thought it was three away games back to back. Oh, actually, I thought the Man United, Fulham and the Everton games were all back-to-back. When they're not, you've got Palace at home. Then you've got Fulham away. Everton away, which is basically home anyway. Like, but I know, but yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, of course you do. <laughs> yeah. But, and then you've got the West Ham away game, um, which is the one which could get moved from the Saturday to the Sunday. I think it will. I think I think Arsenal and Man City will probably go through. Right. Real Madrid, though, that is a... Yeah, that is... Who, who knows? And then we've got Spurs at home. Aston Villa away, which I think is going to be the banana skin. And then uh, Wolves at home. I do think the Aston Villa away, which is the second to last game, if, if it's literally... Um, you know, we're level on points with with Man City, <laughs> and Arsenal are like done and dusted by then. That's a real banana skin as the second to last game, I think. Um, I think Man City. I think Man City have got. They've got West Ham at home as their last game, but they've got Fulham away <laughs> at the game we've got. Um, the game we've got Aston Villa away, so they got a really hard away game as well. Um, they've got Wolves at home as well, by the way. Man City's last three games are really hard games for them. Like they don't do well against Wolves, they don't do well against uh, Fulham, and West Ham. West Ham are a banana skin for anyone. They just thought you just don't know what West Ham's going to turn up. I know you, you don't all change up yeah. uh, that West Ham, to be honest. Well, what do you think of this, boys? I'll start with you, uh, JK, and then ends with you, K Man. Our recent records against Brighton is not that great. Now, I want you to come in on both occasions on this uh, comment. Worries me more as to Zerby. We'll want to prove a point for the last time versus Klopp. But also what he wants to do is look at me, you know, do you think I could become mm. your manager? Well, he's their choice, isn't he? Uh, okay, JK, then I want you to feel I'm just going to do something. Okay. Okay. No, I just feel Brighton and Potter were more of a worrying sort of fixture. I think this new guy, there's every... He's too inconsistent. Like Brighton, I've seen that this season, the win games, lose games, win games, lose games. They haven't run like run loads of games in a row and stuff. So I'm not really worried about Brighton as such. Um, yeah, and the part a much better team. What do you think, hey, mate? I, I agree, mate. I, I think I think Brighton are better under Potter. Mm-hmm. I just do. Like, um, I'm sorry. Like, if you. Go to you go to Luton and get tanked four yeah. <laughs> 0 Seriously, yeah. like, seriously. I think Everton beat them as well this season. Mm-hmm. Like they've been stinky in a lot of games. Like, yeah. Like, and I I understand like he, his team's been decimated and it has like he's lost a lot of players and he plays loads of kids consistently. Yeah. Um, he ain't getting a result at Anfield, mate. I don't think so at all. We'll we, we score three. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Like, they're playing like they're playing a goalkeeper who who was like third choice goalkeeper under the Potter. 
steal. Mm-hmm. Like, wasn't he like a free transfer from like Middlesbrough or something? Like, like yeah, yeah he's. Fun, yeah, and they just consistently want to play this football, like this this passing football, and I think our high press might might catch him out, especially at home. And we should have beat them at their ground. Like, we should have beat them at their ground. Like, like Graven Birch, man. Like seriously, you got to tap in and you get the post. Yeah, we had like four on. It was like four on one in that move or something. Yeah, we. I was really annoyed that, that we that we drew that game. But um, two two, yeah. Yeah, I think he's. Uh, he feels like a mercenary manager for me. He feels like he'll go to like a Chelsea or a Man United. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't see him at Liverpool. So many people are talking about him, like thinking he's good enough for Liverpool. He's not. No, is that to say? He, he came. About? He came. He came from Shakhtar Donetsk and then went to Sal uh, Sal Salcedo, and then goes to Brighton. Yeah, oh, oh, really? And and Liverpool are going to take him. That feels like a Brendan Rodgers, doesn't it? Not. Feels like a Brendan Rodgers, Swansea, Swansea to Liverpool. Really? Exactly. Not exactly. a chance. Sorry. Exactly. I uh, do you want to I, give you the I, Arsenal I, games. Do you want to give you the Arsenal games. These are interesting, by the way. Go on. Um, so they've got they've got Man City away. We've got Luton at home, which isn't going to be easy for anyone, by the way, because Luton is just unpredictable. Then they've got Brighton away, and they're not great at Brighton's ground. Arsenal. We drop points at Brighton's ground as well, by the way. Then they've got Villa at home, Wolves away, Chelsea at home, and Spurs away. <laughs> Spurs. And then they've got Bournemouth, who they also drop points against. And then they got Man United at home, uh, so Man United away, and Everton at home last game of the season. Like that last game, that second to last game for all teams, is a banana skin. Arsenal have got Man United, and um, we've got Aston Villa, and Man City have got bloody. Who did I say Man City have got? They've got a really tough game as well. Man City have got Fulham. That's not. Fulham could be on holiday, to be fair. They could be on holiday. But, yeah, interesting. It's one hell of a run. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's great that there's three teams in it. It really is. Like, I, I like the fact that I like the fact there are three teams in it because it means that more points can be taken off other teams because they've got to play each other, if that makes yeah. sense. No, of course. And the fact that we've we've done Ars- we played Arsenal now we we played Man City now they're all done and dusted, they've now got to go at it themselves, um, and they've also got spares. I mean we've got spares at home, but well, spares don't spares don't don't normally do well at Anfield, right? They don't. No, we'll beat spares. Yeah. We'll beat, and, and I'm convinced that we'll beat Man United as well. Listen, I'm convinced that we we'll, we'll go out. We'll go out every single game because that hurts us against uh, Man U. That hurts us big. And we'll go out in every game and say, well, all right. Then. And don't forget, you know, I said at the time, it could be a blessing in disguise. This is before uh, we played. It could be a blessing in disguise because we're playing too many games. We're playing every other day. And this is what I was saying, but it's just this break that we're, that we're on now. And that's the only recovery time that we've got. But with, with us being out of the uh, the cup, the FA Cup, we've got recovery time to go after the league, to go after the Europa League as well. And I think we can do it, K-Mac. I think we can do it, JK. I really do. But if we've got our players back, like the likes of Jota, I think he's pivotal. And if Dia, if, not Dia, if the... Darwin can uh, find, you know, some good form like he has done. Like he has done. Um, oh yeah, look. I wanted you to talk about the manager. She says, uh, "How do you, how do you and the panel in chat feel about the talks about Fraudgate being our new manager?" I can't cope. I will burn all my shirts if that happens. I can't back him. Sorry. Fraud there's, is... there's no way. There's, there's not a chance on earth. Like he, no. he, he is never on that list. 
<laughs> Never. Yeah. We, me, me and Frank know who we're getting. Yeah. We certainly it's done, do. It's done and dusted. Alonso's yeah, already really? agreed. He's already accepted. Yeah. I've heard it. I've heard it now as well, Frank. So. Uh, I was told months ago. Yeah, I, I, well, I, I heard it yeah. a couple of days ago off, off my yeah. Sabolsai source. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, it, did take, it did. It did take quite a while, though, for him to um, for him to accept. But he can't say anything, can he? He no. can't come out and say nothing. We we are going to spin it that we're not going for him, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. And this is why uh, all these uh, like even Pep Linders has come into the equation. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and oh, now we've got ex-players talking about Pep Linders. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Which is fine. Which is fine. Liverpool love a smoke screen. Liverpool oh. love a smoke screen. And and I love the fact that we're bringing that tank with them as well. You've heard we're bringing to poster as well, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely. Uh, as the WCs there, you know, we're talking about all kinds. Of going on. I, blame, all I, blame money. I blame money. <laughs> Of course, we blame Lordy D. Somebody, everything blames. Uh, I, I blame. Somebody. I blame Seth Blatter because he started off corruption in football, and yeah. he made he made it he made it legal. Did you think <laughs> that? I, I, I'm glad you brought him up. I really am. Do you think that Michel Platini was a scapegoat because he went before him, didn't he? Yeah. And I think Michel Platini was a scapegoat in all this to yeah. save uh, Seth Blatter back. Yeah. Do, you, do you remember that? Um, do you remember that? Yeah, that, that go and all and all threw all the money at him. Oh, that was brilliant. That? That? <laughs> I don't know who that was. I don't know. What I, it I can't what remember. Was. He was a comedian on on um, on Channel Four, I think. Oh, was yeah. he? Was he an English fella? Yeah. yeah. Well, it was the fact that it, it was it was the fact that all of the African all of the African officials came out and said, "Like, yeah, yeah, he paid us. Yeah, we, yeah, we paid him. We paid him for for, for the for the Qatar. vote, and whatever." I'm like, "What?" Qatar. That's all you've got to think of. Qatar. Crazy. At the time, I went. That's a disgrace. That to get Qatar because it upset the all of the uh, the leagues right around uh, the world. Especially how, in many Europe, play, how many players Europe, got injured? How many players got injured as well in that World Cup? Oh, it was shocking! It's absolutely decimated everyone's teams. I've, I've got a shoot now, all right, mate. Yeah, we're shooting all uh, now anyway. To okay, be honest, buddy. I'll and catch I'm up with you be... again. All right, great show, yeah. and I'll watch the rest back as well. All right. Okay, Cheers, take care. Mate. If you're watching later. from my channel and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe yeah. to Frank's channel, guys. All right. Yeah. And the same with uh, on this channel, but uh, K Max. Up the Reds, well. man. Big up, guys. So, uh, listen, if you're there, do us a favor, just smash the like button. I don't like saying smash the like button. Can you just press the like button and Get the algorithm out there for me, please. And you know, if you haven't subscribed, just get to subscribe. And uh, as the DW says, there, all the passion, all the money expressed tonight would not change if players were living in the on the bones of their backsides and the owners were local. Absolutely, this is why Liverpool was great, simply because we had an owner who was a Liverpool supporter. And he said, I have to go because I can't compete. Especially when that Bramovich came into Chelsea. No, we still can't compete. We might think we can, but we can't compete. What do you think about that, JK? We can't compete, really, can we? We've got to have a manager like Klopp. And I don't think there's anybody like Klopp. And what people tend to forget as well, if we go in for a player, because what other people are saying is this Amaran, he's, uh, oh, he, he buys cheap plays. Well, hang on a minute. It's all right over there in Portugal, Spain or wherever you can buy the, the cheap little players. But once Liverpool come in for them, the prices go from there to up there. Mm -hmm. this, is what they, 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 this is not the, what they're thinking. 
they just say, oh, be brilliant, you know, bring an image. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I just feel that this whole manager, sporting director scenario, soap opera, do we really need it now? While we're going no. through the title challenge and stuff, I feel could have waited, but it's happened. And I think, look, Almiron, uh, he was an ex-player. It's going to cost you $25 million to get him. I find out that, oh, I heard about that today. So... There's a price. There's a price tag connected to that managers nowadays. That's what football's turned into. It's a, uh, it's madness. Um, maybe he could do a job, but I think everyone's favourite is Alonso. And I think also, what Klopp has done for Liverpool regarding the transfer fees. You know, that's working with Edwards, getting Salah for thirty-seven, Mane thirty-eight. Um, who else? Just like good players for cheap prices. I couldn't see Klopp spending a hundred odd million on Casado. He's not really a big spender, you know. He's always the sort of get a guy in, talented, top price, good price for the club. And if he has to go, we sell him, we sell him. But um, I just feel we've always worked on that sort of Coutinho, eight million he cost from Inter Milan. Sold him for 140 million. You know, we do them sort of things. Don't really want it myself. Um, yeah. You know, we are Liverpool. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Well, on that lovely note, on that lovely note, Sean C says, uh, I think Lindsay's is the Alonso backup, to be honest. <sighs> Don't think so. Don't think so. Anyway, it's just for me uh, to say a big, big, massive thank you to all you people out there for keeping us company. Uh, big thank you to my mate over there, JK, and also yes, Brian yeah. K. Macken, and also our lovely George, you know, the lost Shankly boy. Uh, it's been great. It's been wonderful. And all I've got to say is a big thank you to all there. Uh, oh, look at that. Big up Frank and JK and chat say Freedom Journey. Bless, man. Bless. Isn't that a great name? Freedom Journey. Mm -hmm. We're always on a, a Freedom Journey. <laughs> but anyway, and that Daryl Mary cut me up. Roll me, roll me one. <laughs> Something like that. That was so funny. That, that was so funny. But anyway, it's just to say, keep it real, DW and Tico, everybody, Sean C, uh, Red Bears, Panascouts, no, not Panascouts, you haven't seen Panascouts, Daryl, mm -hmm. you know, you've all been wonderful, honest to God, you've been great, and you, sir, thank you, thank you so much for uh, tuning in, and the Amphil Raw, with all those pints and scotches, and uh, I'll see you all on Thursday, hopefully. Let's hope that uh, we've got some, some news. Some news. I don't like rumours. I just want news. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I'll give you who I know and who K Mac knows as well who's what's done and dusted. And you will all be happy little bunnies. Happy little bunnies you'll all be. And uh, it's just for me to say, Good night, just for say, say good night there, JK. Yeah, good night, guys. I'll see you all on uh, Thursday. Uh, and for all you other uh, nice people who likes uh, the film and TV review with JK and uh, Lee Carlson, I'll see you all on Thursday morning at 10 30. And Thursday night for the football show. Thank you so much. Love you all. And uh, Shiva the Amo, Shiva the Amo, was our Italian.